Okay, good evening and welcome to the February 24th meeting of the Falmouth Zoning Board of Appeals here at Falmouth Town Hall. Calling the meeting to order and ask everyone to please silence their cell phones at this time. I'll introduce the board. Starting at my far right, your far left is Jerry Patamas, who is an associate member. Uh, to his left is James Morris, who is a full, full voting member of the board. Uh, to my right is Scott Zielinski, who is the board's vice chair. My name is TJ Hurry. I am the chair of the board. To my left is Bob Dugan, who is the board's clerk. And on the far left there is Scott Peterson, who is an associate member. Also with us tonight is Noreen Stockman, who is the zoning administrator, and Ashley DeMello, who is the recording secretary for the night. The zoning Board of Appeals is charged with applying the zoning bylaws for the town, and we consider requests for special permits, variances, and appeals as provided in the bylaws, which have been approved by town meeting and the Attorney General's Office for the Commonwealth. All decisions the board makes are made through the public hearing process. The board's goal is to hear testimony from the applicant, from the public, and also to allow a full and fair discussion of the project prior to rendering a decision. To begin each hearing, the clerk will read the public announcement of the hearing and then present any pertinent information from the file, such as referrals from town departments and summarizing correspondences to the board. The applicant or the applicant's representative will then have 15 minutes to make a presentation and time may be extended by vote of the board. The board will then question the applicant and then the public will be invited to comment as well. Public comment should only be directed at the project itself. We ask you to please refrain from making any personal or derogatory statements. Public comment can include an opinion in favor, in opposition, or it might just simply be a question about the nature of the project. The chair will limit discussion in the interest of time in the event that comments become repetitive. All members of the public wishing to speak should wait to be recognized by the chair and then you'll be invited to come up to the podium to the left. We ask you to please state your name and address for the record. And we typically limit public comment to two minutes per person. Um, on behalf of FCTV, we also ask you while you are presenting behind the podium, please remain behind the podium, speak into that microphone there. That microphone is meant for uh, people watching at home at FCTV. It is not meant for amplification within the room. Um, as for either closing or continuing the hearing, when the board is satisfied that enough information has been presented by testimony and in the file to make a decision by motion and vote of the board, the hearing will be closed. In the alternative, we may continue the hearing to a future date and time certain. After a hearing is closed, no more testimony may be taken. And regarding board discussions and decisions, the board may then further discuss the project among ourselves. Then we would make a motion to either deny or approve that would be made and voted upon. Such a motion will include a summary of key findings and conditions. An affirmative vote of four members, which is a supermajority, is required for approvals of motions on special permits, variances, and appeals. <coughs> a split vote, such as a three to two vote, would be a failure to carry and res would result in denial of the project. Under Massachusetts general law, if a special permit is denied, the applicant cannot return to the board for two years unless the project is substantially different. Uh, so turning to the agenda for the night, we do have public comment followed by two continuations, four new hearings, and we do have a few items on our open meeting agenda. So up first for tonight is public comment. This public comment period is meant for anything not on the agenda. Uh, so there's a lot of you in the crowd. If you are here wishing to speak on something that is on the agenda, just wait for the appropriate time in the evening. Uh, but at the moment, is there anyone out there with anything to say on something that is not on the agenda? All right. Moving into our agenda then. All right, so Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to take um, an item out of order, uh, which is uh, under new hearings, which is Shade Trustees, 40 Alder Lane, North Falmouth. Uh, we'll start that first and then go to the continuations and new hearings uh, as per schedule. Second, Mr. Uh, Dugan's motion. All right, so the motion was made by Bob and second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, passes unanimously. So we will be taking. Uh, Alder Lane first. Yep. Uh, you just need to. Sure. Okay. So we'll be taking application 1 22 Shea, trustees, 40 Alder Lane, North Falmouth, requesting a special permit to construct an addition to the second floor of the non conforming single family dwelling. Okay, and you just need to appoint. 
Uh, yep, so the voting members will be uh, the regular voting members, and uh, Jerry, you'll be voting on this one. Counts. So application number 00122, Leslie B. and Eileen Shea, trustees, 16 Harcourt Street, Apartment 4D, Boston, apply to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Pursuant to sections 240-3C of the Code of Falmouth to construct an addition to the second floor of the non-conforming single-family dwelling on subject property known as 40 Alder Lane, North Falmouth, Mass. For referrals. Uh, from engineering, application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Alder Lane is a private right of way in the area. Any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. The project does not direct any stormwater runoff to public property of butters or public rights of way. A note on the plan indicates that the new gutters and downspouts for the addition will be connected to the existing dry wells as we would typically recommend. And where this project falls in the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission and does not abut a public right of way or public land, we defer to the Commission for Stormwater Management and Construction Erosion Controls. Planning Board, no comment. Fire Department, the Fire Department has no issues with the project is drawn. Assessors, no comment. From the Water Department, the water service is on the plans as required, and the existing home has town water, and the meter is inside the home per current rules. Did we receive a um, from conservation? Uh, I don't think so. We didn't hear anything from conservation. Uh, so we did receive some letters. So this is dated February 15, 2021, uh, from a Mary Ann Hyatt at 38 Sunset Point Road, North Falmouth. Uh, dear Chairman Hurry and the members of the Zoning Board, I'm writing to briefly express my full support for the proposed renovations to the home at 48 Sunset Point Road. That's the wrong file, oh. I think. It is not. I think that letter was just included in the wrong file. Do you have another letter in here or no? We'll correct that. <laughs> uh, it was, um, they did uh, do a FEMA breakdown worksheet uh, showing that based on the assessment in the uh, improvement threshold, it is within what's allowed for improvements under the guidelines. And that's it. Okay. For the applicant, Kevin Clower. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. For the record, my name is Kevin Clower. I represent the applicants, Leslie Shea and M. Eileen Shea, uh, the owners of 40 Alder Lane. I'm joined tonight by uh, Les Shea. Um, he does have a letter, a note here signed by uh, the five closest of butters um, requesting that the ZBA grant a special permit to allow the construction of the second floor addition, which I'd be happy to submit. And just a quick note before I begin, uh, the Conservation Commission did approve uh, issue an NOI la or approve the NOI last week. I'm not sure if the actual order has issued yet, but we'll of course make sure that gets submitted to the file when it is. Uh, the applicant tonight is seeking a renovation and modification of the existing dwelling, all within the existing footprint, uh, in order to create some additional habitable space. This property, 40 Alder Lane, is located at the edge of the Salt Marsh in Wild Harbor Estates. It's a well-established uh, residential neighborhood. This particular lot is just over 16,000 square feet. It's in the RB zoning district, and the entirety of the lot is within an AE15 flood zone. Uh, the existing structure is a one and a half story, four bedroom dwelling with a shed. Total footprints just, over th uh, just under 3,100 square feet. The lot coverage by structure is 19.2%. The structure is non-conforming uh, to the setback to the four-foot contour of the waters of Bu Buzzards Bay, which is 43.2, where 50 is required. Otherwise, it complies with the front and side yard setbacks and lot coverage requirements. The existing ridge height is 28 feet, 4 inches. They are proposed to add additional space in order to accommodate their family's needs. This would be in addition uh, to the second floor over the existing footprint of the structure. It would serve as a recreation room. The addition would be slightly cantilevered over the deck, and, but would be entirely within the existing footprint. This will not result in the addition of any new bedrooms. The ridge height of the addition will be lower than the existing ridge height. It'll be um, 22 feet, nine, uh, nine and three quarters inches. The 
proposal will not result in any new nonconformities. However, due to the existing nonconforming setback, it does require a special permit under what is now Section 240.10.2A4, previously 243C. This section states that pre existing nonconforming structures may be changed by special permit when there is a finding issued by the zoning board that the proposed alteration is not substantially more detrimental than what exists. To determine uh, the board is asked to consider whether the nonconforming structure reflects the nature and purpose of the structure when the bylaw took effect. The nonconforming structure is not different in quality, character, and degree from prevailing, what was prevailing at the time the bylaw took effect, and whether the nonconforming structure is not different in effect of, on, its neighborhood, on the neighborhood. Historically, I think and perhaps easier to understand, the board considered the standards of 240.12.1e, which was 240.216, and whether or not the alteration creates any new dimensional nonconformities, impairs views and vistas, and reasonably, reasonably conforms to the neighborhood. I'll be honest, I'm not entirely clear what the recodified bylaw is asking. Uh, it's, it's, it's worded quite cumbersome. Uh, but the structure, is, as proposed and as existing, uh, is a single family dwelling, which will have the same nature and purpose, which will not be different in quality, character, or degree, and will not ha have a different effect on the neighborhood. Further, there's no new nonconformity created. The existing nonconforming setback is unaffected, and it otherwise complies with front, si front and side yard setbacks as well as lot coverage requirements. There's no impacts to views and vistas, and it remains consistent with the neighborhood. Uh, the proposal is not a substantial improvement under the FEMA standards. The work is less than 50% of the appraised value. The proposed alterations will significantly improve the space for the applicant's use and family. It will not create any new dimensional nonconformities and will result in an attractive, useful dwelling which is in character with the surrounding homes. There's no adverse effects and it meets the requirements of 240.10.2A4 and 240.12.1E. Uh, I'd be glad to address any questions that the board may have uh, at this time. Thank you, Attorney Clark. Jerry, any questions? None at this time. Right. James? No questions, thank you. Scott? No, sir, thank you. Bob? No questions. Scott? No questions. All right. Don't mock it up, DJ. Shed's going to remain, Attorney Clark? What's that? Shed will remain, yes. Shed will remain, yep. And the resulting lock coverage is still 19.2%, I believe. Okay, we'll turn it over to public comment. Uh, any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? <coughs> Anyone at all? All right, not seeing any. It's a big crowd out there tonight. Back, back to the board then. Motion to close. Second. All right, motion to close made by James, second by Bob. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously, hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. How would, how would the board like to proceed? Very, very so much. Motion to approve with conditions. Okay, okay motion to approve okay. with conditions made by Bob. And second by James. Findings? Uh, just a quick question, just to the administrator. So where we are have all the new um, bylaw changes for the references, but the applications are under the old ones, what do you want us to reference the old ones and then you'll insert the new ones or? Uh, so the bylaw in effect would be what's in effect at the time that the application was filed. So we'll so just we'll just so reference what we have. It, the new bylaw um, references should be used. But we can insert them. Uh, okay, finding. So um, the nonconformity is, is within the uh, four foot contour of Wild Harbor, 43.2 where 50 is required. Our property is not creating any new nonconformity. Uh, Sessors had the property as a four bedroom. Originally the plan was for a three bedroom, but there was a den that met the definition of a bedroom, so they will be keeping the house as a four bedroom as assessed. Law coverage remains the same. Yeah, law coverage will remain the same at uh, by structures 19.2, structures parking paving 27.3, existing ridge height was 28.4, that's actually being reduced to 22.9 and three quarters. House is on town water. I don't think the ridge height's getting reduced. I think it's just that section. The ridge height will remain the same, but the addition. So we'll just will be reference that the we'll we'll just reference that the addition will be at twenty two nine and three quarters. Bob, letters of support. Yeah, there was a submission at the um, at the meeting. Demo breakdown uh, sheet. On-com approval uh, waiting on that. Uh, five uh, 
people in support bitter yeah. butters before the older testimony was that they did receive it from Tom Tom right that they uh, received an NOI but we haven't gotten the final yet not more detrimental in keeping with the neighborhood uh, also put in the findings that the engineers department is referring to CONCOM because it's under their jurisdiction so whatever is in their decision will have to apply as a condition but erosion sediment control Uh, gutters and downspouts will be uh, connected to the existing drywalls as on the plans. And then water service is on the plans and the uh, meter is already inside the house. Mm. <coughs> uh, and then reference, I guess, 240.12.1E uh, uh, e and 240.10.2A4, uh, which is referenced on that application as uh, there's 240 uh, 243C and 240-216. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Conditions? Uh, per plans. Uh, Soil and er uh, erosion controls to comply with CONCOM decision. Uh, CONCOM uh, NOI to be supplied if there's only one. Right, anything else for conditions? Uh, work hours. Work in hours, construction. Yep. No vehicles and materials to be kept on property. And the findings is going to remain a four bedroom. Yeah, as, as per the assessor's record. All right, last call for anything else. All right, so that was a motion to approve with conditions made by Bob and second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you all very much for your time tonight. We really appreciate it. And best of luck with the remaining hearings. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so that, yep. So that was application 1 22 out of order. Back to uh, we'll be, uh, the agenda as right. printed. Yep. Under our continuations, we up first we have application 112-21, Hall Lynch, 8 Cotuit Road in North Falmouth, requesting a special permit to remove the existing garage and construct an addition with an attached garage exceeding 20% lot coverage by structures. And I believe this was previously continued but not yet Opens. open, so we'll have to read everything into the record. So application 112-21, uh, Christopher J. Hall and Aaron T. Lynch, P.O. Box 382, North Falmouth, Mass. Supplied the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pertaining to sections 240-3C and 240-69E of the Code of Falmouth to remove the existing garage and construct an addition with an attached garage, exceeding 20% lot coverage by structures on subject property known as Acretuit Road, North Falmouth. Uh, Conservation Commission held a hearing under a NOI notice of intent, which was closed on February 2nd. An order of conditions was voted upon, uh, but has not yet been issued. This is dated uh, February 17th. Uh, from Health, uh, Scott McGeehan, there is a Board of Health variance on the existing septic system for four bedrooms. The proposed plan shows four bedrooms, so no issues with the floor plan. Also, the land used for the addition would not be considered usable space for a future system reserve area. Therefore, health has no issues with the proposal. Uh, from conservation, just that they were under subject of the NOI, but we already got the update on that. From uh, engineering, the application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Catuit Road is a private right of way in this area. Any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town departments. Project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property abutters or public rights of way. If the property falls in the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission, we defer to the Commission for Stormwater Management and Construction Erosion Controls. Dry wells are included in the design for the new roof as recommended. From water, the water main and service must be on the plans. The existing home has a one-inch service tied into a 10-inch main in Katuit Road. 
the existing home has the meter inside and the remodeled home will need the same. Fire department has no issues with the project. Assessors has no comment. Uh, we have five letters submitted with no objections. Uh, there was a FEMA cost uh, breakdown worksheet uh, that was submitted showing that the property lies within the threshold. There's also a lot of coverage analysis uh, on bulk for the, pro for the project. That's it. All right, and for this project, we'll be appointing Scott as a voting member. For the applicant, uh, Attorney Moynihan. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Laura Moynihan from Falmouth, a local attorney. For the applicant, uh, Christopher Hall and Aaron Lynch Hall, uh, uh, who are here tonight along with Denise Benoli, the uh, project architect. So this is an application for um, alteration to a pre-existing non-conforming structure as well as lot coverage by structure over 20%. Uh, this GIS map highlights the uh, location of the dwelling along with the neighboring properties. It's in uh, West Falmouth, just off of <laughs> Old Silver Beach. And these are some renderings of the existing dwelling, which is now 25 feet in height uh, with a detached garage. Uh, the, these are all in your file, the west and east elevation as well. Um, we have obviously developed neighborhood. The lot size is about 11,000 square feet. Uh, the lots are very similar in size in this neighborhood. The house was built in 1962, according to the assessor's records. has four bedrooms on the second floor, 25 feet in height, and it's residential B zoning. The existing uh, lot coverage is 18.1% by structure. Um, overall lot coverage is 27.7%. We have a non-conforming front yard setback, 23.2 um, feet to the dwelling, and 18.5 feet to the front steps. And we also have a non-conforming setback to what it's actually the four foot contour. I apologize, that's my typing area error. Error, it should be four foot contour. It's about 15 feet at the detached garage and 35 feet from the dwelling. So the property abuts uh, portions of Buzzards Bay, so the four foot contour is applicable. Um, the lot coverage of 20% is characteristic of this neighborhood. I, you've seen other applications in this neighborhood for lot coverage over 20%. Um, I gave you a lot coverage analysis. Most of the homes in that the coverage is 20% to 41.2% by structure. Um, the project will involve removing the existing garage and deck to construct an addition to the home. Um, the non-conforming setback to the four foot contour will increase to 35 feet. So the removal of the garage will essentially eliminate that very narrow setback to the uh, waters of the of the pond. There won't be any change in the front yard setback. So the addition will be set back further from the street. And there will be some significant improvements to the dwelling overall with new windows, trim, and siding, which is in need of some uh, upgrade. The proposed coverage by structure is 23.4% and overall lot coverage under 40% at 35.7, no increase in bedrooms. Uh, the stormwater drainage will be installed as shown on the plan, so that will be an improvement. Also, um, there will be about 2,000 square feet of mitigation plantings, um, coastal bank restoration, and uh, the Conservation Commission has voted approval of the project. The order has not been um, issued yet, but um, the agent did update your file to confirm they had approved it, and we will file a copy of the order when it comes in. So this is just a colored plan showing the existing conditions. You can see the waters here and the marsh. This is the existing garage and the existing dwelling. And I've just highlighted here the uh, front yard setback and the uh, rear setback to the uh, contour. Uh, the floor plans, these are all in your file. So the first floor plans, fairly modest size home. Um, the four s relatively small bedrooms on the second floor. Um, and the basement is unfinished. 
This is the proposed site plan. I've just colored it in here so you can see the existing uh, dwelling. The yellow portion is um, taking the garage and actually attaching it to the dwelling itself, um, new deck and patio area. So you can see how this area in here is uh, being increased and this sort of dashed or um, dotted area is the all the mitigation that's being proposed along that coastal bank and water's edge show a pretty significant um, benefit there environmentally. Uh, the proposed floor plan just showing the layout of the first floor really just increasing the living space on the first floor adding the covered patio um, basic kitchen dining room uh, bathroom layouts second floor there'll be some increased areas bathrooms maintaining the four bedrooms and adding some open office areas on the second floor uh, these are the elevations um, the dwelling addition will actually be lesser in height than the existing 25 feet um, and 25 feet for this neighborhood is actually a fairly modest elevation some of the the uh, neighboring dwellings are higher than that uh, these are the east and west elevations on the home so under the zoning bylaw I've cited the um, sections as of the date of the application um, I wasn't aware the new bylaw had been approved by the Attorney General yet but it hasn't so um, so I'm still going on the old sections um, I'm with you <laughs> yeah. um, so, so what happens is as of the, the vote at town meeting yeah the new bylaw becomes effective but it's just not blessed until the Attorney General approves it so. okay so I'm I've quoted the old sections um, Anyway, so um, we are non-conforming on the structure. Um, no change to the front yard setback. The addition will conform to the front yard. The rear, yard, the rear setback to the four-foot contour will be increased. The lot coverage uh, to 25%. We the project will conform to the overall 40%. Um, the proposed coverage by structure at 23.4% is 373 square feet over the 20% that would typically be allowed so um, relatively speaking not a large increase over the 20% the lots in this uh, diagram that I've highlighted are the ones that I've included in the lot coverage analysis just to show you the proximity to this house so these properties are all over 20% by structure and here are some pictures just to give you an idea of the size and scale of houses in the neighborhood um, that I've highlighted to it road um, Taunsett road which is around the corner and sent to it road and this is uh, a house that was under construction it's probably finished now or um, almost finished but that's at 2 Coa to it road and 23 Coa to it road so I would submit that the project is not substantially more detrimental it is in keeping with the neighborhood homes there are beneficial impacts to the neighborhood with the improved dwelling um, that does increase the non-conforming setback to the four-foot contour new stormwater management which is a benefit particularly on the coastline here significant landscape mitigation plantings restoration of the coastal bank you do have uh, letters in your file um, I think it's significant that those letters are from abutters on both sides of the Home as well as the two across the street so people in direct vicinity to um, the project have reviewed the plans with the applicant and have indicated they don't have any objections and so I would submit the standards of the bylaw have been met and we would ask you to approve the application <coughs> thank you attorney Moynihan turn over to board questions then Scott anything no questions at this time Bob no questions uh, Attorney Monahan, is um, is this uh, this property under any current special conditions or a special permit previous to this application? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, you wouldn't happen to know, you wouldn't happen to know if uh, the septic system is an, an H20 system, would you? Um, the system was replaced, um, I think, a number of years ago. I don't know if it's H20. Well, it, appear, it appears um, it was, in the new plan directly under the driveway. Okay. 
It was inspected. And I can't, I can't find it on the notes anywhere if it is or it isn't. And it I looks am. like the, uh, the soil absorption system is, is close. If you're at 20, 23 feet from the radius of Katuit Road and you see the, uh, the chambers in there, and it shows 23.2 feet, and they sit in the middle. That's telling me that it's a lot closer than 20 feet from the house. Well, there was a variance approved by the Board of Health, I gather. There, Mr. McGann yeah, noted that. I don't, I don't that have the details of the variance, but there was a notation that the Health Department did have a variance active on this property. Um, so when the system was... Prior to, prior to the application. Okay. Yeah, prior to so... The application. I just want to get that on record. Yeah, thank you. Thank um, you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Jones, anything? No questions. Thank you. Sure. No questions. All right. I'll turn it over to public comment. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? Not seeing any. A motion to close. I'll second it. Okay, motion to close made by Bob, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Passes unanimously. Aye. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. So motion to approve with conditions. I second Mr. Dugan's motion. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Scott. Findings? 240-3C, uh, 240-69E, 240-216, not substantially more detrimental. Uh, regarding the lot coverage, currently they're at 18.1, increasing to 23.4%, which is under the 25% allowed by special permit. And structures, park, and paving, 27.7, increasing to 35.7. Again, under the 40% allowed by special permit. Uh, for non-conformities, you got a front yard non-conformity of 23.2 uh, the dwelling, 18.5 to the steps. Uh, there's also non-conforming to the four-foot contour of the pond, which is at 15 feet. That will be increasing with the new plan to 35 feet. There's no increase in the bedrooms. It's four remaining four. Um, there is a Board of Health variance on the existing septic system. Five letters uh, of no ob uh, um, objection. Yep, and regarding the uh, the variance, uh, paying note that the land used for the addition would not be considered a usable space for future system reserve area. Uh, on the letters of no objections, those are letters from uh, butters on all sides. There was an order of condition um, by testimony that is finished with the conservation department. We don't have a uh, final on that yet. Uh, the addition will be less than the 25 foot height of the main structure. Uh, you put that the Uh, put that the, the uh, service for water is currently a one-inch service to the 10-inch main. The existing meter is inside the home and the remodeled home will need the same. Uh, also put that they submitted a FEMA worksheet. And the worksheet shows that they're within the threshold of allowable for the improvements. And also put they submitted the uh, lot coverage analysis. And in the analysis, uh, a greater percentage of the homes were over the 23.4 uh, coverage that is requested to do. About the removal of the garage slab and structure. You want that as uh, yeah, I mean, you findings could, and condition? Yeah, you could, you could add that in the part of the plans. Did you indicate the Board of Health? Yep, I put in the Board of oh, Health. Oh, you did, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, anything else for findings? Testimony will be about 2,000 uh, square feet of mitigation plantings. All right, anything else? How about conditions? Uh, for plans. For plan in the hours. Building hours. Uh, materials and vehicles to be kept on site. I uh, will have to reference that the erosion controls will be controlled by conservation uh, board of conditions. Uh, right. Since we haven't seen that, whatever their conditions are, we'd add to ours as a condition. 
and the structure and slab on um, conditions as well. Yep. Okay, anything else? We right. missed what you said. We have the structure as per plan to take down the existing structure and slab that's uh, the garage slab. We have it on uh, conditions and um, findings. Also add in the finding um, the importance of the improvement of the setback to the four foot contour. Does that do it? All right, so that was a motion to approve with conditions made by Bob and second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 House is unanimous, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Attorney Moynihan. Okay, up next we have application 61 20, Echo Land Development, LLC, Zero Percival Road, Lot 4, and T Ticket. Requesting a comprehensive permit to construct 16 single family dwellings. Four dwellings will be affordable. Voting members on this project are myself, Bob Dugan, Scott Zielinski, and James Morse. I'll just notate there were some additions to the file. Um, late today uh, regarding the uh, peer review information and also information that was submitted by attorney Chris Lepers regarding uh, buildability. Uh, both of those came for today. I'm assuming that most members haven't had time to review it with the late submittal. And we have a letter also from attorney Beth. We also have a letter from Attorney Wall today. Is it in here? Okay. All right, so uh, this is from uh, Troy Wall and Associates, uh, dated today, February 24, 2022. Uh, dear Chairman Hurry, during the 14 plus months uh, that the above reference 40B application has been pending before the board, I have submitted several letters on behalf of Daniel Kulturi, owner of 187 Percival Road. Patricia A. Harris, owner of 181 Percival Road, and William and Margaret Overholtz, owners of 193 Percival Road, here and after abutters, expressing concerns and comments regarding the proposed project. The abutters continue to have the concerns set forth in the letters and incorporate the letters by reference. In addition, my clients have the following concerns. Uh, one, clarity of plans. The town engineer and the peer review engineers have both asserted that despite the passage of 14 months, the project plans are not clear. The town engineer stated in his memorandum of 127.22 that the plan set is difficult to read in general, labels are covered by lines and there isn't enough differ di differentiation in line weight, objects are on top of each other, text is too small to be legible, labels are missing and various other issues. Eventually the board will have to reference an approval plan set in an approval. The plans as submitted would not serve very well as record plans. The peer review engineer has the same concerns. The plans need to be clearer. The plans should be broken up into typical sheets like existing condition plans, grading and drainage plan, utility plan, roadway and profile plan, erosion control plan, site lighting plan, detail sheets, et cetera. Also, there should be a clear distinction between what is proposed and what is existing. When showing proposed work, it should be shown in black and bold. The existing work should be shown as screened or gray. These comments make it uh, is the manifest that the plans are not sufficient to facilitate meaningful review by the board and are not, and are not inadequate uh, as record plans for the incorporation into a permit. A two surveyor stamp, the town engineer noted that the plans depict property lines and dimensions to property lines and as such must be stamped by professional land surveyor. The plan lack a, such a stamp and are therefore not sufficient to facilitate review by the board and not inadequate as record plans for incorporation into a permit. Three, list of waivers. The list of waivers submitted by the developer continue to fail to identify all the waivers that are needed for the pro proposed project. Without a complete list of waivers, the application is incomplete and cannot be acted upon. Without a complete list of waivers, the board is unable to engage in the required analysis of determining whether the granting of each requested waiver is consistent with local needs and concerns. The abutters provided the board with a list of waivers that they believe are necessary in their letters of December 8, 2020 and December 15, 2021. 
The developer's list does not include all these waivers and the developer has not provided an adequate explanation as to why the waivers identified by the butters are not necessary and are not being requested. The butters are not the only parties making this contention. The peer review engineer letter dated February 22nd, 2022 identifies 41 waivers that may be necessary but, sh but which have not been requested. In their letters of December 8th, 2022 and December 15th, 2021, the abutters asserted that the design of Access Road is confusing and would create a safety hazard. The concern is shared by the planning board, the town engineer, and the peer review engineer, who states that the intersection of the proposed common driveway and Percival Road is unsafe and should be resolved before board issues any approval of the project. The applicant has failed to address this concern. Moreover, the proposed design requires numerous waivers which have not been requested. Uh, five, the drainage design is too close to an abutter's septic system. An attention basin proposed by the developer appears to be closer than 50 feet to the septic system on property owned by Patricia A. Harris, owner of 181 Percival Road. If this is the case, the detention basin does not satisfy the 50-foot setback requirement. The developer should be required to evaluate this setback for all abutting properties. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Respectfully submitted, Brian J. Wall. Again, on behalf of Daniel Fulturi, Patricia Harris, and Mr. and Mrs. Overholtz. Um, do you have the um, Mr. Leverett's letter in here? Said flip the back. Okay. So this is a letter dated February 24th, 2022 from uh, Christopher Lebhertz uh, to the administrator, again regarding uh, Montero Echo 40B C attachment, the which he included attachments. Uh, hi, Noreen, please find attached the Falmouth Assessor Map Plan 420, page 9, and Plan 373, page 86. I am sending these over to show the board uh, Old Mill Road on engineered plans. You will note both engineered plans clearly state that the property line is the center line of the way. We own all land to the south of the middle line of Old Mill Road. Plan 420, page 9, shows a great deal of personal road encroaching onto the subject property. Plan 373, page 86, shows both Old Mill and Percival. Percival Road was created to grant access to those properties north of the subject property, access to Locust Field Road via Old Mill Road. Clearly, there is a significant portion of Percival encroaching onto the subject property. It is simply in the wrong place. There are no deeded rights to any of these, to any of the property abutters to use Percival Road over the subject property. If any rights exist, they are prescriptive in nature. The purpose of all of this is to quell the notion that the Montero Echo Project is infringing on the rights of the abutters. In short, it is not us encroaching on them, it is them encroaching on us making use of our land. We do not lose uh, rights to use our own land simply because others may be using it, even if using it uh, legally, which is not conceded. We suggest uh, it is a red herring for the board to be entertaining arguments from the abutters that we are infringing on their property rights at or near the entrance of the property. We would further suggest that the ZBA is not the venue to even debate such an issue. We are simply seeking to permit a 40B entirely on our land. Uh, we are hopeful for a vote tonight. Thank you, Christopher G. Leverts. And again, there was attachments um, regarding his letter. Uh, also, uh, today we got the submittal uh, of the information from the uh, peer engineer, um, Adele Shaheen. Uh, which I assume he will go over, but I'll just read you the cover letter. Dear Ms. Stockman, we have received the peer review responses from Echo Land Development, and they are included as an attachment to this letter. We have the following responses, and it mentions the responses to items 1 through 8, 10, 12 through 13, 15, 34, 36, 37, 40, 41A, 41B, 44, 46, 50 to 53, 56 to 67A, 69 to 93 have been acknowledged, so no further action is necessary. Uh, we defer to the Zoning Board for approval and whether additional waiver requests for items 9, 11, 11A, 14, 16 through 33A, 35, 35A, 37A through 39A, 41, 42 through 43, 45, 45A, 47 to 49A, 
54 to 55B, 68, 68A, and 94 are required. Uh, and then he submitted his information. The other letter that just got submitted uh, late. Any letters in here? Okay, uh, again, today, uh, Thursday, February 24th, this afternoon, uh, and this is from a Jessica Salzman. Uh, it says, Dear Ashley DeMello, uh, the Administrative Assistant. My name is Jessica Salzman. I am the owner of 231 Trotting Park Road. My property sits on the corner of Trotting Park Road and Percival Road. I'm opposed to the proposed project on Percival Road. I do not intend to allow anyone to use any part of my property for this project. Uh, I've had my property surveyed and will be putting up a six foot stockade fence around my property, including the abutting corner of Trotting Park Road and Percival Road within the next few weeks. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, Jessica Salzman. Uh, and just by notation, um, there was an additional uh, information put into the open meeting file uh, from the administrator just regarding a call that she received. Um, just for disclosure, I've also I'll put information uh, in the file regarding the same call as it was relayed to me because I happen to be in the zoning board. Um, and I will leave it up to the chairman on um, what kind of clarification would be needed from the applicant or anyone else regarding that information. All right, thank you, Bob. All right, and for the applicant, is it Mr. Montero or Attorney Lovritz? I'm not sure who's presenting tonight. Yes, yeah, since the, um, the last hearing, um, we worked with peer review for the last six months. We've met all of the conditions uh, for them, either for drainage, site view coming out of the uh, property, uh, setback requirements that we needed to uh, have for the uh, subdivision itself. So as, as uh, far as I am concerned, working with peer review, uh, and they can uh, mention it, they're satisfied with uh, what we have presented all of the uh, information that we've given, they wouldn't let us proceed one step further unless we were satisfying probably 90% of a subdivision type of regulation. The waivers that we do ask for, I have submitted them probably from the last uh, meeting. You do have those on file. Uh, but as far as the uh, project is concerned, you hired probably one of the uh, top 10 uh, engineering firms in the state and, uh, and they have approved, they have approved, essentially approved everything that we have on there. So if there's any questions um, you, you would like to ask, you know, please ask them now because um, I think I've completed the project for you guys to uh, make a decision on it and vote. Okay, anything else, Mr. Montero? Um, at this time, I don't know if... Uh, Mr. Adol Shaheen would like to uh, make any comments. Sure. <clears throat> yes, uh, Adol Shaheen, Green International, peer review engineer. So, yeah, since the last hearing we had in December, we have received um, two revisions to the site plans addressing our comments. The most re recent uh, re uh, submission was last week, also what was by Noreen. So, uh, we reviewed it, uh, and they have completed or satisfied all our comments, as noted in the letter that Mr. Duggan had read. All these comments that we had related to the stormwater, to the safety issues have been addressed by the applicant. The remaining comments are really related to bylaws, and they haven't really, you know, they're asking for waivers for them, so we'll defer to the board for these. Uh, we believe that it's, as I said, satisfied all the stormwater you know, for the town and for also the state standards. They have met all of these requirements. And they've also addressed all the safety requirements that we had most importantly related to the public safety as for, you know, handicap, you know, ADA accessible, you know, ramps, uh, turnaround areas, and also for side distance. So we believe all those have been met. The only thing I would 
add is just make sure there's no fence that's been blocking, and especially at that corner in the south south corner of the intersection with Rotten Road and Bristol Road. Just have to make sure there's no nothing will obstruct the side distance in the future. So that's the only concern that we have right now. The rest of them, as I said, will defer to the board for you know for your input on the uh, the item decided in the letter that was issued on the 22nd to the administrator. So that's all we have, you know, for now. So I think we complete our review, and there's no further comments for, from our, you know, from our uh, review is going to be coming forth. Uh, so, so I will, you know, defer to you if you have any questions to me related to the plans or anything to the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, okay. See if there's any board questions, Jared. Uh, th this has come up uh, more recently. Did you review to see if this needs a stormwater permit from EPA, the general permit? We reviewed that, and we don't think it would need a general permit. Isn't it more than an acre? Well, they, they have to they have to do that during construction, but not right now. Right before they go to construction, they have to submit it. So you're saying that they will need to yes. get a general permit yes, for EPA, EPA prior to construction. Yes. In addition to the towns. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. James, anything? Can you speak to the comments that were raised in the letter of Attorney Wall concerning uh, unidentified waivers and what the status is? Well, those are the waivers. I think they mostly related to bylaws. I think there's 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 quite a bit of them. You know, I mean, I if I can go through, you want to go through all each one of them, or a lot of them to do with you know these setbacks, the width of the roadway. You know, a lot of it's ge geometry, but if this is considered to be a private road or a private driveway, then the, most of these are not applicable, you know, if, they, if it stays as a private. Uh, if, if this is going to be turned over to the city, to the town, for acceptance in the, down the road, then they don't meet th these requirements, basically. So, but they're not really concerning, you know, they, they, you know it can be constructed as, as shown in the plan. You know, there's nothing, but it just doesn't meet your requirements, basically. Anything else, James? Not at this time. Thank you. Scott? Uh, the letter that we received tonight uh, from the abutter that was going to put the fence up in two, two or three weeks, does that concern you with way of uh, sight line? Oh, we just have to see what property is, is that one and then where exactly they're going to put the, the, the fence. Because that we, we have, they have shown a line in the plan to show where the side distance from the intersection. That's not something you can determine right now whether it'll be I a can't without seeing their proposed location of the fence. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Bob, anything? No, so so uh, well, I guess, so you basically said it would have to do with the bylaws, but have listed approximately 38 items that may apply that you, you may need waivers for. Mm -hmm. um, and can you just uh, go over again regarding the turnaround at the end of the development? Yes, I think there was the shared the shared driveway space or how they're laying that out. <coughs> yeah, is that related to the fire department? Because there was there was a comment about that I think about you know uh, emergency vehicles turn around and they designated an area for turnaround and that was accepted I think by the fire chief and he had a, he had a comment on it just as long as not blocked in the future for turnaround. As long around. as there was a way to keep that. You know, a way to keep yeah. that space. Yeah. Um, and could you just, there was a comment on one of the letters tonight regarding a setback to a septic, si an abutting septic system. Did yeah, you find I, that in your review at all? We haven't really seen the septic system. We don't know how far, it does, because that's not included in the, in the survey plan. So we don't really know where is that septic system in relation to the recharge systems that we have. But that's all I have. Yeah. All right. Scott, is anything? Not at this time. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions from the board to the applicant himself? I'll go back down. Scott, anything? No. Rob? I guess just to confirm, Mr. Montero, so uh, on, the, on the waivers that you've actually listed as your total waivers requested, um, how many, how many, what's the total of the waivers that you requested? The, um, total waivers, one comes under the uh, zoning waivers which is uh, section 240-112A, uh, which is the minimum requirement for an 80,000 80, square foot AGB lot. Yep. We don't have that, so uh, that's why I'm asking for the waiver on that, along with the um, 16 exclusive uh, 
individual areas for the lots along with the Title V septic systems. So that would come under the uh, subdivision, I mean, sorry, that comes under the zoning uh, waivers. Under the uh, subdivision one, it's the uh, waiver of the length of road, private driveway, seats 500 feet, that's under Chapter 305. 5 dash, I mean, dot 2 uh, dash 4, section A. Uh, the other one would be the waiver on the uh, cul de sac, chapter 305, 5.2D, uh, B waiver, because uh, it's a private, uh, turn uh, private driveway and has a T turnaround that was accepted by the fire department. The other one would be uh, chapter 305, 5.1.1J, disturbance of any important wildlife habitats and wildlife corridor. See attached letter from March 4th, uh, 21, when we hired the uh, environmental engineer. Uh, the other um, uh, waiver would be a Chapter 305, 5.5.2, waiver on granite curbing on sidewalks. Subdivision is a regulation sidewalk with five bypassing area for handicap access, which meets, uh, which meets all of the regulations. Yeah. And then uh, Chapter 305-24B5, uh, waiver on the intersection radius of 25 feet. The other uh, thing you have to realize is when you look at that plan, besides it being a uh, 40B, the, uh, those uh, houses and lots meet actual standard uh, subdivisions. If I was applying for a, a permit, the only thing it wouldn't meet would be the, uh, the zoning on it. So if these lots were all 10, 15,000 square feet and I was applying for a single family permit, I meet all those setback requirements uh, by the uh, zoning uh, by the zoning commissioner. So regarding, because um, I know it's come up before with Mr. Wall's letter, where he's related other other waivers that he thinks that you would need. Have, do you have any um, contention with those, or have you reviewed those at all to see if you need? Those I, I looked at the uh, waivers, but some of them cross each other when, when they're talking, so some of them are redundant. So I'm basically putting the main ones that I need for the approval because everything else on that plan uh, conforms to what I was working with the peer engineers for what they were looking for. So any other waivers that uh, the abutters may be asking for, uh, either I'm meeting it with the criteria from either drainage uh, engineers, the peer engineers, or my engineers for the subdivision. So, for example, like item number two you listed, which is the 16 exclusive areas for the lot subdivision, um, I think is different than asking for a waiver for six units per acre. So, well, the, I, the, the subdivision you have to realize also is 50% density when I applied for it. No, I, I understand that, but when we normally see these 40, there's some waivers that I just haven't seen here that we see on all of them as okay. almost a general, mm -hmm. and I just don't see them asked here at all. Okay. And that's why I was asking if you looked at any of the waivers that somebody else had suggested you may need, mm -hmm. or for example, tonight when, and again, this stuff came in tonight, I didn't review all the peer engineer stuff, but all those items that he listed uh, may require a waiver. Um, if any it, of those items he listed on that second section that and you look at it and you think it requires a waiver, we would need a request for that. Okay, well, in respondents to that, if whatever the peer engineer uh, added above and beyond what I had, I would have to incorporate those as, as, as the waivers for the uh, project. Yeah, so all I'm saying is that we can't ask, we, we can't say you need to put this waiver mm -hmm. in. Um, the request actually has to come from you of exactly yeah. what the waivers are. Right, um, well, ag again, to... Uh, it, it, it looks like there, there may be waivers that you're missing that you need okay. to request. Then, uh, if it's possible, then the waivers that he uh, actually uh, submitted to the board for uh, for the record, I would want those incorporated in the uh, in the subdivision plan. So again, he he's he's giving us basics of what the bylaws are. Mm -hmm. um, you would just need to go through it and take out and just write and say, "I want a waiver for blank 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 blank." This is what okay. you're asking for. Along we can't just reference that right. the peer review said that we may need a waiver for something. Right. So we can just reference what his letter is. I mean, I know this just came in tonight, too. Um, so how would you like that handled? Because, like I said, I, I had the waivers that I just uh, presented to you. on. So we have the waivers you presented to me, so we know what those are, so we can review those. Um, but if other waivers are needed and we can't review them for the application, you may not get waivers that you need, which means even if the application had been approved based on just your list, mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't be able to do the project because we didn't waive what was required. Okay. So it's just something you may want to review on okay. on, on, on that information. That's, that's the only question I have. All right, thank you, Bob.
Scott, anything? Jim, I have a, a question for uh, Mr. Montero's legal uh, representation. Sure. Mr. Lebert, um, if you recall, the last meeting, you and I had a brief discussion at the end about uh, uh, Eladio Gore's, your discussion with him and his affirmation about buildability. Right. And I encourage you to get some kind of written documentation. Were you, were you able to do that? No, I, I wasn't, but I, uh, again, um, Mr. Uh, Gore made it very clear that he, this it was not his policy to, to do that. A after our conversation? That's correct, okay. yes. Um, I can just make representation to you, Boyd. Uh, you're, you're referring to the note that said not a building lot on the old I'm referring plant. to the, the hearsay conversation that you and he had, and I just simply asked for <sighs> written documentation with and regard I, I, to the content of that. And his, I didn't want anybody to affirm someone else's uh, uh, opinion of something without, I thought it was important well, you, enough to get him to weigh in on it one way or the other in writing. Right, That's well, you, you asked me and I asked him and he indicates that he doesn't, he, he doesn't do that. I asked him if he would appear and he seemed hesitant to do it. But I'm telling you what, what the sum and substance of the conversation was and clearly the board can take it up with Mr. Gore. Uh, I don't need to debate at, at it with you time. now. I just wanted to know whether you were, you were. I don't have anything writing. That's all I needed okay. to know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. James. Oh, thank you. So just for the record, just because I know that came up and he, he can't speak, Mr. Gore was the building commissioner, um, but currently Mr. Gore isn't the building commissioner and now we have an acting, uh, which is Gary Street. So if anything new has to come, it would have to come from Mr. Street. Yeah, but in all fairness to the applicant, that was he wasn't there then. Or Mr. Gore was there. Then. No, and I understand that, but because we didn't get anything in writing from Mr. Gore, and then Mr. Gore left, right? Uh, we don't have anything to base it on since Mr. Gore is no longer here. Right. We would have to go by what. That's why I asked the, if there was if it was in existence. That's all. Thank you. Jim. Yep. I, I think the peer engineer. On site distance last time, you said it well, if it was a chain link fence, and I think it pertains to the letter we got tonight, uh, I think you said if a chain link fence was there, there would not be an issue. The abutter or the neighbor is saying she's going to put a solid fence, so we are they going to have to review that for safety concerns, for site distance. Yeah, if, if we, as I said, there's a line showing in the plan right now showing what the line of the site distance. If that is in that line, then it's going to be a blockage. It has will 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 affect it basically. So we'll have to make sure that doesn't happen. If it happens, but it was along her property line. Like this. It's going through close to the property line through some existing trees right now, which I think is being called to be removed. So without really saying exactly where she's going to put the fence, it's hard to to know if it's going to be within the line or outside the line. So just as a follow-up question, if, if you have a, if you have a situation where you have an end of street or a driveway and you have private property that you don't control. Um, so you can't control if somebody puts up a fence or if somebody puts a blockade up. Um, is there anything else you can do to control site distance where you can't control the adjacent property? Well, I think the only issue with the car, the car approaching car to the intersection would have to go a little through in the, in, into the intersection to be able to see that far. So it, it is, it's not ideal. But you know, it's. Uh, would it would it create a safety concern? It could. Is that could, your professional opinion? It's good to create a professional. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I had another question for the attorney. Sure, go ahead, Jerry. I think this is going back to uh, Mr. Zelensky's comment on discussions with Eladio concerning uh, approval not required and access to the property. Um, I think we discussed that. It's more in the purview of the planning board, which we stand in for, to review that. So his opinion, although helpful, may not be binding. I, I, I would respectfully not agree, Mr. Potamus. Um, it's the building department that determines if a lot is buildable or not. It's not the planning board. It's the building department. There is a note on the, uh, on the 2000 A&R plan uh, 589.39, and it does say uh, that this area in question, it says not a building lot. And 
when I first, I wasn't involved in the, in the early stages of the proceedings here, but uh, Mr. Montero asked me to address that particular issue. Um, I, looked at it, I, I looked at it two different ways. Is that in perpetuity? You can't develop four or five acres of land? And the answer was clearly no from Mr. Gore. Mr. Gore said that note was there because there, there had not been any, any type of a determination of access. He was very clear. He was very clear. And I might further suggest to you that uh, he, he bolstered that argument by saying this is 40B and this is a comprehensive permit that we're looking at here tonight. We're not bound by that notation under 40B. This board is free to, free to determine, de determine that. With so, uh, well, I, I, I'm just summarizing, so I don't want to, but I think what you said was we can ignore, well, the board can ignore the note because it's acting in, instead of the planning. I, I would suggest it can because we're here under 40B, but I would further suggest to you, in the strongest of terms, Mr. Goh is very clear about it. I, it's disappointing to me that I go to a building commission to say, will you come to a hearing and put it in writing? And the answer is no, because I want to satisfy Mr. Zelensky. But I, I clearly suggested to anybody on this board, you could go down and speak to Mr. Gore, who was there, and I'm quite sure he would confirm what I've, what I've represented. Uh, now, now he's not there. I, I, I have very little doubt that you'll get the same answer from Mr. Street. Um, but it's, but, you it's, know, when it's, I, when, it's hearsay up to this point. Well, it's hearsay, but, it, but, but Mr. Gore is in the same building as the ZBA, and somebody goes downstairs and says, Eladi, what's your opinion here? And, and you have your answer. Uh, I, I tried to do that, and, and I... You were on the board. You know we can't go down individually we used to and do, get opinions. We... You can give us a legal I, opinion. I, I don't know that we can or, or we can't. I mean, cl clearly there's many letters and opinions and things that come in, and I, I, I don't think... That it's it's un, it's it's uh, well it's 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 pretty clear that members acting outside the open meeting can't go directly to any department. I, I understand that, but I think representatives of the, of the board can go and get information and report it in an, in an open meeting. It's it's done all the time. It, it's so have you it, ever it, seen it done in in uh, with this board? And I'm only asking because I've never seen it done. I mean, we could ask an administrator to try to get information, but I've never seen a situation where. A board is, has said uh, we're electing someone as a representative to go talk to an entity within the town. And the burden of proof is clearly on the applicant. Th this was addressed two or three hearings ago. It didn't come up again now. It, it appears to be resurfacing here again tonight. I actually it's thought been an existing I issue. thought we were through that. I, I, can, I can specifically tell the board it, 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 there is no prohibition against somebody from uh, a representative of the board getting the opinion. We do it all the time. Is town council, when we get an opinion from him, is that hearsay? When we get these letters that are submitted into the file at the 11th hour and, and, rep and people aren't here, clearly it's hearsay. You can go and get an, and, and talk to Mr. Gore and make a representation to what he said at a hearing. It's done all the time. I, I sat on the board with your mother, Mr. Zelinsky, and we did it all the time. She, you know, it, it's, she was wrong, too. Well, <laughs> 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 well I think... Uh, it is clear that anybody, that, it is clear that this board can go to our billing department and get an opinion on that issue, and we have no problem with it. And I don't believe it violates anything having to do with an open meeting law. No, I think the problem is, is it's this board's practice to get someone's assertions in writing as opposed to representing what someone said. You know, I don't know what everybody's experience is when they come into the town hall, but when you go in and you ask for a letter and they say it's not our policy to do that, you leave with your head, with your tail between your legs and you say, I'm sorry I bothered you. I did attempt to get the letter. I would have loved to have seen just that. It's not our policy and some kind of affirmation in writing that you could have handed me well, to support your argument. I tried, I, I tried to give you the benefit of the doubt. I mean, sometimes a nod or a shake of a head. I, 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 I really thought, the whole I, I really thought we were beyond, I thought we were beyond that issue. It didn't come up at the last hearing or two. It started it, in the it, first it, 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 hearing, it, it, Mr. Lebhurtz, and it's continued, and we've bumped over it, and it keeps resurfacing because it's never been answered. That's what I'm trying to well, get I can Well, I can tell you this. If, if we're going to go beyond tonight, I, I will pay a visit to Mr. Street and see if he might consider handling it in a different fashion than Mr. Gore. But I will again represent to you unequivocally Mr. Gore's position was if there is access to the parcel, that note that it said it's not a, non, it's not a building lot 
was a nullity. Those were his words, lock, stock, and barrel, and, I, and I'll stand by it. And under I'm sorry, I don't have the letter. But what this authority is, this, nullifies it? And I'm correct, and, I, and I, I'm sorry, I don't have the letter, but I requested the letter. I asked for the letter. I didn't receive it from your building commission. I don't know what more I can do. When you ask me, I'm put it in writing or show up at a hearing. But I, I, are you saying the builder commissioner can nullify the A&R on his own authority? I'm saying that the building commissioner can determine if a lot is buildable or not buildable, and I'm saying that that determination comes from the building department, not from the planning board. Despite the uh, a published A&R? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Montero, reviewing the file myself and seeing the issue raised by uh, Attorney Wall in his letter that was submitted tonight, can you clarify uh, what's the status of the surveyor stamp, the professional land surveyor? Yeah, I, on, the on, the plan, on, yeah on the plan that will uh, get recorded, it'll have um, the uh, surveyor stamp and also the drainage en engineer stamp on it. We, every time we revise the, uh, the plans, I have three separate engineers uh, that, that, that are working on it, but the, uh, it will have the appropriate stamps to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds and for uh, providing the uh, Board of Appeals with the uh, final plan. But at this point in time, there's, there's no... I have the, uh, the engineer's uh, uh, stamp on it for all of the uh, calculations for the roads and uh, the drainage. I think the issue... To, the, to those points only, though? The, well, well, the, the, the original the original plan that was sent that we've worked on uh, worked on uh, the original when I first filed uh, has the surveyor's uh, overall uh, 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 plan on the uh, the 5.6 acres of land. So that was always surveyed, and that was the plan that we always went off of. Nothing's ever changed or deviated from any of the uh, 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 road design or anything else. It all came from the. Uh, the surveyor's original uh, plan that we had that we submitted originally. Thank you. And, and I just want to get back to the waivers. The uh, some of the waivers that are on there were concerns where the engineer had, meaning the peer engineer, either wanted something clarified, or we had to use a certain type of uh, ratio. And the reason why I did not put those in my waivers because we did meet them in the plans. So it'll become redundant, but uh, if those... I just didn't want you to get in a situation where well, you're not requesting a waiver and then get correct. kind of caught because Correct. No, no, I understand that. So basically, I'll look it over, and I, feel I can add more waivers, but I know they're in the engineering because, again, we could, we could not finalize it unless, uh, unless I'm wrong, unless we did meet uh, the uh, issues that he was concerned with. So, for example, on... Um, Okay, so for example, the roadway center line should be a minimum of 150 feet. The applicant should show alignment uh, radii on the plans. We, we show that, but if, if you want that as a waiver, I'll, I'll uh, put the chapter in, uh, included on the, uh, for my waivers. Right now, just, and just for clarification, so right now the, the council that you have, like Mr. Lebris, is he's just on the buildability section? That is correct. And currently you're not using um, other representation? That is correct. Areas. Um, my only other question would be on the on the first, just because the file survey was on the plan. So on the first plan that was submitted, that the 5.6 that was done, uh, who did that plan? Was that Mr. Cawley? The uh, are you talking about the engineering or the the one that you mentioned that was the uh, we, that was, we, he was uh, asking about state that was, plans. that was Stephen Doyle. It was Stephen Doyle. That's all I have. All right. Anything else from the board? All right, I'll turn it over to public comment. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project tonight? Attorney Wall? Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is Brian Wall. I'm an attorney with an office in Sandwich, and I represent the three abutters, Mr. Coultry, Ms. Harris, and Mr. and Mrs. Overhertz. Um, as I said in my letter tonight, this matter has been going on before the board for over 14 months. I've written numerous rather lengthy letters. Um, I tried to keep this letter short by simply referring to the other letters by reference. And my comments tonight are going to be very brief, um, and I'll try not to repeat things that are in my letter. 
the first comment I want to make is regarding the new information that was submitted. Um, what was not mentioned so far tonight was that the town engineer, Mr. Schulter, submitted a supplementary memorandum about a month ago that had numerous questions um, kind of posed rhetorically for the board to consider. And similarly, the peer review engineer submitted some supplemental material. I quoted um, what, what jumped out at, me, out at me from those two pieces of information were they both made significant comments about the clarity of the plans. And I quoted what they said in their memoranda in my letter but I would like to point out tonight what I think the takeaways of that are. If the two engineers that are providing consult to the board, other than the applicant, have problems with the clarity of the plans, I would respectfully submit to the board that the plans are not sufficient for you to conduct your review in a meaningful way. And then looking forward, if the board were to approve this project, clarity in the plans is paramount when it comes to enforcement because if you're out in the field and the building commissioner thinks that the plan says one thing and the applicant says no, it says something else and it's ambiguous, it's going to cause problems. And I've read in the paper recently that this board has had issues with some 40B projects. So I would stress to you to require the applicant to submit plans that are satisfactory to the town engineer and satisfactory to you. And regarding the, the survey stamp, um, to me that's kind of a critical issue because the, the, law, the law, the regulations require that if a plan shows property lines, it has to have a surveyor stamp. And I, I do a lot of permitting work. It's routine when there's a plan submitted to the board and then due to board comments, there's a continuance and there's revisions to the plan. The plan gets restamped. The revised plan gets stamped by the engineer and by the surveyor. It's, it's routine. And why that is not stamped, I would respectfully submit, um, I don't know if you know this or not, but Mr. Doyle passed away about two weeks ago. So that might be a reason why the surveyor hasn't stamped the plan. The second point that I'd like to make, um, you've heard me say this time and time again, has to do with the access. Um, the original plan called for access that was on the property line. It was it came in from Trotting Park Road, turned right, straddled the property line. When it was pointed out to the developer that he couldn't do that, he simply moved it on to his property. But what that did do was it created a dangerous intersection with regard to what's now being called the Common Driveway and Percival Road. And we have contended to the board that that is an unsafe condition. I said in the last letter, um, I quoted the planning board, the town engineer, and the peer review engineer all have said that it's an unsafe condition. And I'd actually like to quote, this is from the peer review's um, spreadsheet. It's comment number 29B and also 30B. And this has to do, again, specifically with the intersection of Percival Road and the, the common driveway. It says the driveway intersection with Trotting Park Road and Percival Road is still substandard. We understand that Percival Road may encroach on the applicant's land. However, the proposal leaves a substandard and most importantly, unsafe entrance for both Percival Road and the development's driveway. We recommend this issue be re resolved prior to any approvals. So even your, your own peer review engineer is saying it's substandard and unsafe, and he's recommending that it be resolved in some fashion before you approve it. And that's something we've been saying all along, and it, it continues to be the case. Uh, the third issue I'd like to raise, and the final issue, has to do with waivers. Um, from the very first letter I wrote to the board back in December 8, 2020, a year and a half ago, we identified numerous waivers that we felt were necessary that were not being asked for. The developer has, he, he delayed on submitting it and then he submitted a list and then another list and then finally the list that we've got which has about five requests for waivers. First, I'd like to suggest to the board that the requests are not clear. They don't cite to provisions of the regulations or to the zoning bylaw. Normally what you see is kind of a tabular sheet where it says we're requesting a waiver from this section for this reason. He's kind of mixed them all together. Um, for example, this the second waiver request, and I'm not even sure because it's not complete sentences, but it says waiver on individual units. Units will have an exclusive use area as per plan including individual septic systems in lieu of all units on entire parcel as common area. I think what he's saying there 
is he's asking for a waiver from one of the provisions of the zoning bylaw that says that in this particular zone, the coastal overlay zone and the watershed protection zone, this development is supposed to have a shared treatment plant. And if they can't get that or, or establish to the board that that's not possible, they're supposed to have denitrifying septic systems. And the proposal is for 16 conventional septic systems. So I would respectfully submit that this waiver request is not clear, it's not satisfactory, um, and moreover, um, as we've indicated, it's incomplete. We've identified numerous requests for waivers that should be made. And my final point is I want to segue to um, the discussion that I just saw with regard to the peer review. Um, we looked at the letter that came in. I saw it today. I might have come in the day before. Or it was we, we just received it today, too. So. Okay, it's dated the 22nd. Today's the 24th. I counted 41. I think, Mr. Dogan, you said there were 38 um, and the, the engineer says, defer to the board for possible waivers. Many of them have to do with the road issues that I've been kind of banging the table all about. I would really ask you to look carefully through what the peer review engineer has said, and no, no dis disrespect to him, I, th I think it's maybe the way that his style is, is, is um, how he approaches this thing. But he's saying to you, the board, he's deferring to the board to determine whether or not waiver requests are necessary, whereas we contend, and as Mr. Dugan said, it's the applicant's burden to ask for those waivers. And we think that there are probably 38 to 41 requests that aren't being made. And we would ask the board to require the applicant to do that. Um, and again, final point, many of them have to do with the safety issues that I've been kind of pounding the table about, about the road access. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate the time to make these comments. Thank you, Attorney Wall. I think we have a question from a board member for you. Uh, Attorney Wall, um, you made reference to uh, uh, Mr. Doyle passing away. I'm looking through these plans that are in front of us, and I, I, I don't see his plans here. What, I mean, what are you referring to? What plans are you referring to? Because all the plans I have here, going back to 2021, are Collie. I'm and they're all stamped and initialed. So what are we, I mean, you got to help me out with that. What are we talking about? So just by way of basics, um, an engineer is not qualified to stamp a plan that changes property lines or refers to property lines and dimensions from property lines. Under the surveying regulations, the CMR, uh, that has to be stamped by a professional land surveyor. Um, Mr. Cawley's stamp is as an engineer, not as a surveyor. And Mr. Montero, he was asked by the board who was his surveyor, and he said Stephen Doyle. And so I was just pointing out to the board that okay. Mr. Doyle has passed away, if that was the surveyor that's been behind the scenes. And my other point, Mr. Zolinski, was that it's routine practice when plans are submitted to the board and then revised. The revised plans are stamped. Every t they're not stamped at the end. Yeah, yeah they're stamped. I, I just, I, I, you had lost me for a minute, and I was looking for his signature or his right. seal on something, and I couldn't find it. And, and that's my point. It's not there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Attorney Wall. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Thank you. All right. Any other members of the public? Any questions, comments, or concerns? Yes. Good evening. Uh, Pat Harris. I live at 181 Percival Road. I'd like to address a couple of issues regarding access to the development. For purposes of this discussion, I think it's important to refer to the different portions of Percival Road. There's an easterly, westerly portion um, when you first come off of Trotting Park Road, and I'm going to be referring to that as Percival Road. The remaining portion of Percival Road runs in a north-south direction, um, and that I'll be referring to as Goat Alley. Goat Alley is a private easement located on private property and does not provide access to the development. It's very clear that safe access to this development is not possible. This troubling fact has been made painfully clear by the multiple misstatements of fact and alternative road designs provided by the developer. Initially, the developer represented to the board that it had safe access to the 16 dwellers proposed via Goat Alley which access he stressed provided good sight distance on either direction. 
The titles to these properties clearly show that this private easement does not provide access to the development property. To further confuse and mislead the board, the developer staked the property along the edge of Goat Alley. It wasn't until I called Noreen to inform her that the stakes were on my property and my neighbor's properties and should be relocated onto the development property boundary. They were, prop they were then properly set back on Goat Alley. You may remember that prior to the neighbors pointing out that access is not available onto Goat Alley, the Board of Selectmen, the Planning Board, and the Department of Housing and Community Development, DHCD, pointed out that for safety purposes, a second means of access, emergency access, was strongly recommended. Next, the developer provided access from Percival Road, a portion running easterly westerly, but proposed an unusual road design with conflicting traffic patterns. Still no emergency access was provided. Then the developer proposed placing a vegetative buffer in the middle of Percival Road and a failed to attempt to address traffic conflicts. However, title to this section of Percival Road is subject to the rights of others to pass and repass. The developer cannot install such a vegetative buffer which would conflict with the rights of others to pass and repass without their consent. The owner of the de development parcel owns the underlying fee to the center line of Percival Road, subject to the rights of others to pass and repass. The parties who live on the other side of Percival Road also own the underlying fee to the center line on the opposite side, subject to the rights of others to pass and repass. Now the developer claims to have frontage on Trotting Park Road. This is clearly not true. The most recent plans purport to extend the northerly edge of the development parcel over Percival Road, designating the area as the development driveway in an attempt, apparent attempt, to misrepresent ownership to the entire fee of Percival Road, free from the rights of others. You may remember that the developer represented to the board that he could easily widen this driveway further onto the parcel northerly of Percival Road, which parcel he claimed Scott Schulter said was town owned. The actual owners of this parcel, the Cowells, wrote to the board rejecting this claim and stating that they held title to the property known as 197 Percival Road. I'd like to bring your attention to the town engineer, Scott Schulter's March 10, 21, 2021 memorandum. In paragraph number 12, Scott states, I quote, the property line at Trotting Park Road intersection, formerly Locust Street, does not match the plan on file in our office and at the Registry of Deeds. The plan he referenced is, the re is in, the, in your record and is the ANR plan just recently discussed, prepared by Jeff Gonzalves. It's recorded at Plan Book 587, page 39. It is a 2000 a and R plan, and it's also included. It's also contained in the online ZBA file at page 123. The A and R plan clearly depicts the northerly edge of the development parcel at the southerly edge of Percival Road. It's noteworthy that the A and R plan also depicts two concrete bounds at the intersection of Trotting Park Road and Percival Road. I've been unable to locate such bounds on the developer's plans. I'd like to bring your attention to other observations made by Scott in his most recent memorandum dated January 27, 2022. Number one, does the developer have the right to upgrade the portion of Percival Road as proposed? I think not. My neighbors and I, who have the right to pass and repass over Percival Road, enjoy the privacy created by living on a dirt road and have no interest in paving the entrance, which would more likely than not result in increased traffic. Number two, plans that have property line geometry and dimensions to property lines must be stamped by a PLS, a professional land surveyor. Many of the plans submitted by the developer have not been stamped by a PLS, which might ex explain the discrepancies previously described. Number five, Scott recommended that an enlarged detail of the Percival Road Trotting Park intersection be added to the plan set. Scott goes on to describe how site distances on Trotting Park Road are not correctly drawn on the developer's plans 
submitted thus far. Because the proposed driveway exits the development parcel onto Percival, excuse me, onto Percival Road, additional site distances should be provided at this intersection. This intersection is particularly, particularly hazardous because traffic driving northerly on Goat Alley will be required to make an almost 360 degree turn to access the driveway. As originally stated by the Board of Selectmen Planning Board and DHCD, access to this property is difficult. Emergency access should be provided. Instead of providing mer emergency access, the developer proposes a substandard T turnaround, substandard as described by Scott. Comment number nine. As early as the May 20, 2021 hearing, the de developer was told to excuse me, to obtain fire review of the proposed turnaround. I'm unaware of any written referral by the fire chief. I've heard mention of that tonight, but I haven't seen it and I'm unaware of it. Finally, I read with interest the recent Enterprise articles reporting the board's frustration with 40B developers who failed to conform to the terms of their comprehensive permits. This developer has repeatedly misled and or misrepresented material facts. It's my opinion that the developer has provided this board plenty of reason to be concerned that he will not take the details of any permit seriously. Nevertheless, I think this permit application should be denied for failure to provide safe access. My attorney has previously cited, provided citations to hack decisions, the Housing Appeals Committee, upholding local denials based on failure to provide safe, ask, safe access. We would be happy to provide copies of these decisions if desired. Thank you. Ms. Ellis? Mr. Chair? Yep. Did we get a copy of that or is it? Of my outline? Sure. Yeah. yeah. That was an outline. I hate to see a thesis. <laughs> 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 I'll give this copy to Noreen. Yeah, I'll stamp yeah we'll, we'll have to stamp that in if, if you do want to submit it, Ms. Harris. Do you want me to bring it in tomorrow then to your office? If, if you don't need that one, I, it's up to you. I could just stamp the one you have. It's I mean, why don't I just stamp the one you have? It's just easier. You've read it right. already. And yeah, and I also think, um, it, you know, the developer mentioned that all the plans are derived from this plan. And as I mentioned, um, Ms. Harris, you're going yeah. to make the statement from the podium. Please. We, we, we were generous with, with your time, Ms. Harris. I'll just say what I was saying walking across. The 2000 A&R plan that I just handed to you um, is the plan of record that the developer has referenced as being um, stamped and signed by a um, professional land surveyor in that they, that is the basis of all the plans in your file. But I um, want you to note, um, and in a large plan you can see that the northerly um, line of the lot, the development lot, is southerly of Percival Road. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Uh, anyone else out there, public comment, any other questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? Anyone at all? It's a full room, so I'm just making sure Everyone who's here tonight wishing to speak has already done so. Okay. Uh, one clarification. She was talking about the A&R lot in 2001. The original uh, plan that we saw, uh, we filed showing 16 lots on uh, Percival Road is, is the uh, 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 engineering of record on that for the uh, survey, not the one that she just handed you. And, and as far as... Um, any type of traffic uh, impediments or anything. Again, uh, with the peer review uh, over the last six months when we were going over the engineering, that was all taken into consideration and he also has given us uh, his okay on the way we have the road coming in. So there is no type of uh, detriment of cars coming. Because they only have three houses and over a thousand square feet that are coming out of there. He also presented in the last hearing, two hearings ago, then they were saying there'd be like 80, 80 cars coming out of there. The peer review when they did their own uh, traffic study, 
at the peak between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. was 17 automobiles coming out of the development, and from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. was 18. So a lot of the uh, information they're trying to give you is saying it's misleading, it's going to be dangerous, was, was approved on the plans by the uh, peer engineer. Uh, I was going to actually ask a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Mr. Shaheen, can, can you clarify what your opinion currently is of the presently proposed entrance to this project? Yes, I just want to clarify for the record that the comment 29 that was mentioned tonight is really was based on an old alignment for the driveway. That driveway has been changed to be almost in line with the current alignment of Percival Road. So this comment that we had in there before, uh, we kept it in there just for the record because we, we, we wanted to make sure there's an understanding that who owns that, that right away. We don't really know who owns it. We just see right now the way it's presented, it's following the existing alignment. So he just widened into his property. So as shown in the plan right now, side distance have been met, except if they install the fence, as I said, if there's a fence installed that could be impeding into the side distance. Um, just also for the record, all the ones that we defer to the boards are not really any safety concerns. They just don't meet your bylaws. And they, again, some of them to do with vertical, you know, side distance, some of them to do with uh, tangent slopes, breakaway slopes, but nothing is concerning as far as safety for the public. It just, they don't need your bylaws. But there's no certain standard for driveways. The driveways can be constructed you know, without these requirements, if you were just talk, talking about driveway. But that's, I just want to make sure that's clear for the record. So all these we're deferring to because they just don't meet your bylaws. Any issue that to do with safety, we have brought up and discussed, and they've addressed it already. And when you reference uh, the, the sight line, you're referencing the distance along Trotting Park Road. Right, exactly. From the intersection of Percival Road, we, we looked at both directions, and they have met those sight distances. We had comments on it. They addressed the comments. So they, so they met the sight distance if left un, unimpeded? If not unimpeded or obstructed. So that was my question. If you don't control the properties that would impede the sight distance, mm -hmm. now, I is guess there any other, is there any, is there any other changes that can be done that would ever alleviate that issue. I mean, if somebody builds a fence or somebody puts something at their own land and you just lose your sight distance, now you can't control that, right. but it then creates a safety issue. Uh, I guess, are there any setbacks on the fences and the, the, the bylaws? I'm not sure there's any setbacks. I know in my town there's 15 feet setback on the side, you know, where the intersections. I don't know if there's any setbacks here that we could you know. I mean, I have to check the building department. I, I know when I've dealt with fences, you could you could put it on the lot line, and sometimes people try to set it in in case they have to get behind it and don't have access. But mm -hmm. I guess the building department would have to tell us if there's a right. Scott, was your yeah, question? Yeah, Mr. Montero, if you have, could I ask you just one more? Mr. Montero, you understand that a, the peer review and its report we use as a tool to help us make a decision. Absolutely. We may not agree with some of the assertions that he makes or some of the observations he makes with respect to the rest of the things that we have to look into. So I understand it, it's uplifting for an applicant to say the peer review agrees with everything, but that doesn't necessarily mean we do. So there are certain things that we're going to require above and beyond what his report states to us. So I just wanted you to be aware of that, that it's, that it's not all set in stone because he's satisfied with it, because he's already identified quite a few things that are unanswered yet. So while it's very helpful for us to get his uh, opinions on things, that's not where we go on solely. I understand that. And again, some of the comments that he makes were uh, after the, uh, we had the revisions. So when you, look, when you go through some of the waivers, when he's talking about tangents and everything else, he's referring to it as a waiver. We already incorporated that into the plan. So that's why I don't have it as a waiver. I, I understand, and I'm just, I'm just simply it, explaining to you that I, that's not I, what we go on. I, 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 un I understand that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Scott. Anyone else from the board? Uh, one thing, Mr. Chair. Yep. Are we comfortable that the peer engineer refu refers to conditions before a plan was submitted? 
we now have the actual plan submitted? Should we have the peer go back and look at it to say, yes, this does, the new plan that was submitted does satisfy his comments? Is that the one that isn't stamped yet? Is that what you're talking about? Well, he was saying that the comments, it could be. Yes. Uh, well, I, I'm, yeah, I'm no, just, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I just don't. Well, he was referencing comments made, mm -hmm. and then subsequently the plan was redone. Oh, no, I get you. I and understand. And so I, you know, I guess I'm not voting, but I'm confused as to do we know if the current plan meets all the peer review's comments? What do you mean if it lines up? Yeah, it lines up, yes. I understand. Mr. Chair? I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> so I suppose the question goes from Mr. Shaheen. As I said, I think a lot, we received the latest plans last week, so I'm not sure if there's any new revisions since last week. Uh, if there are any, we would be happy to look at them again, but I think we, we reviewed the latest plans provided to us by uh, the administrator last week. Noreen? So those latest plans that you looked at, though, were those clear as far as, like, the points that our town engineer had brought up about things that you couldn't read because there were sort of lines on top of lines? Had that been cleared up, or does that still need to it's, be? It's still that's remaining comment. Again, that's a drafting issue that, uh, that you know, the, pro the plans could be improved, of course, you know, as these comments are still there. So... We expect that the final set will have addressed all these drafting uh, you know, issues that can be clear for the contractor who's going to build it, what's existing, what's proposed. You'd have to forgive me. I, I didn't catch any of that. Is it or isn't it? <laughs> the plan as submitted last time. you satisfied time, that they all line up? The plan that submitted last time it could use some drafting help. It, it needs to be improved in drafting, yes. Okay. So we, that's a comment we still have on, the, on our peer review. And do we have a date? You know, you're referring to a plan. Uh, the latest maybe, revision. Maybe if, maybe if I could clarify. The revision plan dated 2 10 was, was that the plan, or those were the plans you reviewed? I believe those are the plans we reviewed. Based those. upon your most recent comments? Yeah. And are those stamped? Yes. Are those yes. the plans we're talking about that needs a stamp? Are These they plans stamped? were stamped by an engineer, yes. Okay. But not a But not a surveyor, surveyor. just but the not engineer. A surveyor. Yes. So would you have to look at them again when those, those, that criteria is met, is what I think Mr. Patamus was asking. Does everything line up for you to give approval with what you've seen so far? Does no, we still have to see the final plans with, oh. the, with, yeah, with the correct corrections and the drafting. And with the stamps, with both professional stamps. With both stamps, yes. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay. I think we still have a few issues with this project, the outstanding waiver list. Uh, the applicant needs to review the peer review's most recent submittal, provide the board with an accurate and updated list of waivers. And then there's the issue of Obtaining the stamps and the final plans. And um, because of the late submittals on both the information we got from the peer review and also the submittals that we got from the applicant, we would have to continue because we don't have enough time and uh, they didn't meet, meet our submittal uh, criteria. Would it be appropriate to give the applicant a list because I don't see anybody taking any notes on this for what we require? <laughs> so the problem with the waivers is we can't give the applicant a list of the waivers. And an applicant can't just say, I'm going to list the numbers that the peer review I'm not talking said. about that. I'm talking about what he just required. Oh, for the, for the for general? What we need and an amount of time to get that done so we can put, we can put, put an accurate finality on this one way or the other. Because we can't continue to kick this down the road. We need to be explicit about what we require, ask them what they need for time, so we can, we can do this. We can't continue to ask Mr. Montero to extend it if he's unsure of what we're asking. So how do we get to that point is what I'm proposing. Well, we, we, need, we need a definite list of waivers. That's okay. absolutely Fair enough. sure. A, com a complete list of whatever you feel the waivers are. 
is, is a must. And I, I don't know how the board feels about the plans, but I know they're not the final plans, and if something's approved, they redo the plans, but I'm in the agreement, too. The plans that we're reviewing now have to be clear and concise, and I don't understand why they're not stamped. Because, up because until that this stamp point, could create a change that someone isn't aware of. Technically, up until this point, the application isn't complete because they haven't got the, the waivers that they're requesting to. We don't have a complete application without that, the waivers request in, in a year. And that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get everything. Yeah, I, I, I understand the, the, wa the waivers that I submitted, okay, and I, uh, whether it's a subdivision or zoning regulation, uh, again, I will go through the peer engineer, but a lot of them on the what he was requesting as a waiver has been included on the plans where we revised it. Now, when you talk about the plans being clear or not clear, they are clear because if you were given, if you were going to give those plans to a site engineer to cut the road in, everything is on there. Now, the one thing we were working with the peer engineer is when you have either uh, uh, your elevation lines. For Mr. Montero, that was the town engineer's comment about it. It's not us. It's, it's I, I, I understand that. I, I understand that. But if, if it was that much of an issue, I, I, that would have came up with the peer engineer. Now, if you look at the plans, the, uh, the regular size plans that we have, I don't see on those plans well, what, what is confusing or what, what, what is uh, not clear. But the, don't you agree that would be a question you'd need to address with him and not us? All we can go is on what we have for referral. Okay. We take all the information that yes. we get in and we make a decision on it. That is correct. All, all we're asking for is as much concise information so we can give you the best opportunity for your, for your project to go forward mm -hmm. or to protect the abutters, whichever way it goes. Yep. That's why we collect information and we want all we can and succinctly as we can. That's all. Okay, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, uh, and I think I provided that. Okay. Were we gonna, Mr. Chair, were we gonna, or uh, Mr. Leverich was gonna attempt to get uh, I, whatever you can get, even if I'm, it's- I'm now very well aware of your concerns, Mr. Patanis, and yours, Mr. Zelinsky. I'm gonna pay a, a visit to the building department, see what I can come up with with Mr. Street, see if I can get you something in writing. And if you can't, if, may I suggest you send a memorandum to us, CCing him, summarizing the conversation. It's still hearsay, but at least he'll have gotten a copy of it and will have can't it. Do that, can't Jerry. do that, Jerry. He can summarize what he's... We can't take hearsay testimony. Well, he, could, I, he could request for the building department in writing. You could send an email, and that way if he refuses to give it to you something, but we can't take hearsay. Uh, We've uh, gotten uh, in trouble with that before. Wait a minute. Let me... I know what you're saying. I'm saying he's free as an attorney for his client to summarize a, converse, a lack of a conversation that he had with a town employee and submit it to us. He doesn't oh, he have to do, give an opinion. Yeah. I've, no, already no. I've already done that. Done that already. I've already done that, no, but apparently that's not right? enough. I did, okay. that, I did that at two or three hearings ago I, at when we were dealing with Mr. Gore. Apparently Mr. Gore we're no longer dealing with. Now we're dealing with Mr. Street. I don't know that he's even familiar with this issue, but I'll bring it to his attention probably sometime next week, and I'll see what I can do about getting a letter. It, it, it's only because we've had past issues where a conversation has has happened, and we based it on the summary of those conversations. I understand the after. I understand the department the, head says you should have talked to me. So we don't allow hearsay in courts because sometimes we question the credibility of the statements. I I fully understand, uh, but I did ask for the letter. I didn't receive the letter. I made those representations to the board, and I made those representations in writing. I'll try my luck with Mr. Street. Thank I'm pretty confident of where I'm going on that issue. Okay. Thank you, Attorney Leverage. Okay, so I think those are the three major items that the board is looking for. Yeah, the waiver is the plan, and then we'll have to review the information that was submitted to us. Of course, the hearing, but the stuff that was submitted to us today again, the peer engineer's information, and the. Should probably go over the letter again that Mr. Lever you're submitted. You're clearly going to have to get some kind of information on on uh, the, the detrimental um, causes of that fence going up. Somebody's going to have to make some kind of decision one way or the other because if the fence is up, then you'll be able to know. But you can't make that determination until the fence is up. Sure. Right. Good point. So I think I think if we're going to continue this, 
we need to give it enough time so all that information can can be delivered. So the only issue you have regarding the fence is that, again, it's a separate privately owned parcel. And if a person said today, I'm putting the fence 20 feet in, and then tomorrow decided to put it a foot from the lot line, we don't have any purview over that. So that. as far as the fence, I think we have to eventually just look at the fact that it's a privately owned parcel of land, which may impede site distance. You certainly can't make an assumption on, on what isn't there, though. Right. No, but we have yeah. to, but we also have right. to. We're, we're talking about somebody who wants to put up a fence to kill a project. I mean, let, let's be honest. That's what's going on here. The fence doesn't exist. I think we act as if there's no fence and no issue until we see one. But we have something in the file now, Attorney Labhurst, that states that they're at clear intent to put a fence up, so that it becomes germane to this this hearing. And I don't we know have if to follow up on. I that. and I, I I understand, but again, we're, are we dealing with what is or what could be? You know, I I think I think we're required to deal with what is. All right. So regardless of that issue, we. Maureen, do we need an extension for this? Uh, we will. I will need to email that to the developer. Okay. Mr. Montero, you your consent. When is it up? Tonight. It would be, it's through today. So do we so have to get a, You would need a future if you have uh, agreement. So we have to get his agreement tonight Correct. to get it on the record. Correct. Mr. Montero, you're amenable to signing an extension? Noreen will follow up with you probably tomorrow, Noreen? Uh, well, we need to set a date certain tonight. Before we right, but I'm at least getting on the record that he's amenable for an extension. All right, so we are looking at a continuance, obviously, in terms of the next, given the amount of information they need to put together, uh, the next available date. Mr. Chairman, may I, may I ask if it would be appropriate to ask the applicant how much time they think they need to do no, that? No, sure, absolutely. How much, Mr. Montero, how much time do you think is necessary? That's what we've been talking about for the last 15 minutes. Mr. Attorney Lebhertz is going to follow up with the build, building commissioner regarding something in writing. There is, you need to review the list of waivers, submit the list of waivers to us in advance of the hearing. And plans, review, stamp plans. And a review of the stamp plans. How long do you think you need, Mr. Montel? I'd say 30 days. Fair enough, Chairman. All right, so that puts us out. Hmm. Looking at the schedule here. <coughs> We have March 24th, that looks well, pretty that full. Too soon, or April 7th would be April the 7th? one yeah. immediately after. All right, so March 24th, basically because it's full, what do we have? We got, we got April 7th after that. Is there any way we can fit it into the 24th? Yeah. That's, a, that's a pretty full day. Sure, we'll take that. I guess we'll let the seventh in. Um, and just for notation for the file, just so you don't get an automatic extension, just for submittals, if anything, you can check with the zoning administrator, but if anything is submitted in a time period less than what we actually require for review, we automatically are forced for a continuation on whatever that hearing is, just so you don't get caught up in a... Yeah. Yeah, the seven days in advance. All right, so we are looking at a continuance to April 7th. So I make a motion to continue this hearing to April 7th. All right, the motion was made by Bob. Is there a second? A second. Second by Scott. Thank you, Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Mr. Montero, thank you for your time tonight. We'll see you back here April 7th. <coughs> About time to take a five-minute break? Yeah. All right, we, the board will be taking a five-minute break.
back, everyone. Uh, on to, uh, yep, we've already done our continuations on to our new hearings. We have application 116 21, Huselman, 130 Mara Vista Ave and T ticket, requesting a special permit to construct an addition in place of the existing carport, creating <laughs> habitable space. Okay, so application 116 21, Kevin J. Huselman, 423 Crossfield Circle, Naples, Florida. Apply to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-3C of the Code of Falmouth to construct an addition in place of the existing <coughs> carport creating habitable space on subject property known as 130 Maravista Avenue T ticket. For referrals. From engineering, the application was revi uh, reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Chestnut Street and Maravista Avenue are public rights of way in this area. No alterations are proposed to the right of way. Any changes within the right of way would require filing a permit with the engineering division. Any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. The project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property or butters or public right of way. An infiltration system is proposed for the new roof area as we typically recommend. Where this is a small uh, site with a work area near the public rights of way, but no permit from engineering will be required. We request that the erosion and sediment controls are included for the project to protect the town's downstream stormwater system. We recommend that the plans be advised to include a demarcated limit of work and include proposed erosion and sediment controls on site and protection of the town's downstream stormwater structures. Uh, we also recommend any approval. Construction of this project shall follow the town's soil erosion and sediment control standard conditions document, which can be found in the engineering division's page of the town's website. Any reference to the Department of Public Works engineering division shall be replaced with the Zoning Board of Appeals, who is the permitting authority for this project. Uh, from CONCOM, the project appears to be located outside of conservation jurisdiction. Planning board, no comment. Fire department has no issues with the project is drawn. Uh, from Kahala Water, the water service in Maine must be on the plans to make sure there are no conflicts. The existing home is serviced with town water. Uh, from Amy Lowell with wastewater. Uh, to Ashley, it looks to me like there will be two bedrooms at 130 Maravista Ave when the work is complete, so no flow neutral bylaw variance will be required. The property owner's designer should determine whether or not a portion of the existing gravity sewer connection on the property will need to be modified or relocated for this addition. If so, a sewer connection modification permit and plan will be needed for the work. The owner's designer can contact uh, wastewater for a copy of the sewer as built provided by the property owner's sewer connection contractor. Uh, from the health department, no issues because it's on town sewer. They defer to Amy Lowell. Assessor's Department, this includes lots 73, 74, 75, and 76, which is all one parcel. And uh, no other letters uh, submitted. Okay, and I will be appointing Sherry as a voting member on this project. And who do we have for the applicant? Good evening. I'm Kevin Hulsman, 130 Maravista Avenue, T Ticket, Massachusetts. I want to thank you all for serving on the board. After sitting through this today, it's a thankless job, and I'm really glad that you're giving your time to do this. So thank you for hearing me on this project. You all have, I believe, copies of what's been done. Uh, the um, all the referrals that I received in the email, I've contacted each of those departments, and then new plans have been submitted to them uh, with the revisions on them that necessary. So I'm just here to answer any questions you may have at this time. All right. Thank you for that. Sherry, any questions? No questions at this time. James? No, no questions. Thank you. Scott? I'll reserve. Yeah. Bob? So um, do you have the, um, the, the water line now depicted on the plan? It is on the survey. The surveyor I contacted, he submitted a new survey with the water line. Um, water main identified on it. And, and do, do we have that one? Uh, he sent it to yes. Yeah, the plan. Um, I guess my only other question right now would be. So you listed the um, construction details for the silt erosion fence barriers, but yes. 
But they're also listed on the new set of plans we're drawn. The architect drew, the, uh, had a new set set uh, submitted to you with plans where the erosion feds would go. So you have those on a site plan? They're on the actual draw, uh, construction plans. Because right, we can't have them on the actual architectural plans. We have to have them on the site plans. I was not aware that they needed to be on the um, survey site plan. Um, when I spoke to the um, engineering department, he said they would, this on building plan would be sufficient for them. Matter of fact, he just told me a sketch it on. I had a conversation with the fine people in your office, and they said it would be best to have the architect redraw the plan showing, and that's what I did. So I guess to the administrator, so did, did we say we could put them on? I've never seen them on architectural plans before. They've always been on site plans. No, I, I think there was a misunderstanding that because we do normally have them on the site plan. Uh, that's the only question I have right now. Yeah. Scott, anything? I think it's good utilization. So <laughs> no further questions. All right. Thank you. No questions for me. So we'll turn it over to public comment. Any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? All right, not seeing any. Back to the board then. Uh, so just a quick discussion. So as far as the soil erosion and sediment control plan, we would have to actually see them on a site plan versus an architectural. Because it's only a detail. It doesn't need to show placement. And I know that the administration just said there may have been a misunderstanding, but we would actually have to have that on there to vote this. Well, or what you could do is condition that they add it and, the, and have um, engineering approval. I could request the surveyor to drop a new set showing the erosion fence control systems on it and have them sent to you within the next couple days. As a matter of conditions. As a matter, I would love it as a matter of conditions, then we get this done. Then. That way you say a uh, return trip. I'm comfortable with that. So then, uh, and then, so in that, that point, the engineering would then, would then review the new submitted plans. Yeah. And as long as they didn't have any comments to us, because if they have comments to us, we yeah. would have to reopen a hearing. Yeah. Mr. Holman, there's, there's no, you have no plans for cooking facilities or anything up there? No, you? it's a, it basically a family room with a mudroom. Uh, we, we decided when I retired to move back up to our home up here that we've had for uh, since the late 90s and uh, found that with, with we're raising our grandniece at the time and the house is just a little smaller at 816 square feet. So uh, we figured it would be nice to have an, another uh, little bit additional space and um, so the use of the carport, which we really don't use much at all. We would just create a nice family space. So is, that, is that paved right now, or are you going to pour a slab under this new construction? It'll be uh, on a frost wall foundation is what we're proposing. Uh, That'll have the protection lit? Yes. For plans? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. All right. Anything else from the board? All right. No. Motion to close. Second. All right, motion to close made by Scott, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. You have, you, you've got five members on this, right? Yep. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, I point to Jerry. Jerry on this one. Yeah. All right, how would the board like to proceed? Motion to approve. All right, oh, we, we did vote on closing the hearing, right? We, we already voted to close. Yeah. Yep. All right. Approve with conditions. I'll second. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, James. Findings? 243C. Okay. 242.16. Downtown sewer. Existing lot coverage when they're going to, it's below 20%. Flood zone. The testimony was to construct a family and mud room in the existing carport. The applicant states that he will um, resubmit uh, the plans required as a matter of conditions. So we can put it in both as a finding and a condition. So Noreen, when we write that in as a condition, how do we write in, who is approving of this? Is it the engineering department since we're? Yes. 
So what we can do is. Um, so the ed so the engineering department will, will sign off that they approved it, but then we have to be listed as the approval person for the sediment control standards. Right, but they will um, look at the plans and verify that the information they're looking for is on the clearance. If it's written correctly, then and it's a matter of conditions, then. No, I was just asking a just a, a question where the engineers department is removing themselves to be listed as the person approving of the erosion control standards, and they're telling us that we have to be the ones that approve of it. So they're they're willing to evaluate what someone proposes, but they're not willing to essentially do the review on the private property. No, I understand. So if we list ourselves as we normally do as the department. Correct. So that will still work out fine. It will still allow them to okay the erosion without us okaying it when it's submitted. Correct. The applicant states that there'll be no cooking facilities. It's just a, uh, I'm sorry, would you? It's just a bedroom family and bumpers room. family room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's currently a two bedroom. It's going to stay a two bedroom. It'll stay a two bedroom. Well, right. Yeah. No flow neutral bylaw. Did I say it's on town sewer? You did. And we're on town sewer, and it will not right. get affected. Sorry. Yeah, we're closed right now. So, so you're going to have to list as a finding. You know, as a finding that you're going to have to list it that the uh, owner's designer need should determine whether or not a portion of the existing gravity sewer connection on the property will need to be modified or relocated to the addition. Understanding that a sewer connection modification permit and plan would be needed for the work. That the condition as well. We're going to have to do as a condition as well, and the and designer the would have to contact. Plans that's coming in. The designer would have to contact the wastewater for a sewer as built provided for the property. It was provided by the owner's sewer contractor. Are you on conditions yet? Not yet. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully right now. We, we can be. Well, then they solicit the finding on the assessor's plan about all the, it's all one lot, but what the lot composition is, put on a finding that it is serviced by town water. All right, so if that does it for findings, we can move on to conditions. So the main condition, again, on the wastewater, the only difference would be prior to construction. Owner's designer shall determine whether or not a portion of the existing gravity sewer connection on the property will need to be modified or relocated for this work and addition. If so, a sewer connection modification permit is required and a plan will be needed for the work. And that could be as simple as taking it off the existing wall uh, and putting it back on after the construction is up. Oh yeah, That's it just has to be done in advance they so they don't get in advance. Owner's designer can contact the uh, wastewater superintendent for a sewer as built. It was provided to the property by owner's sewer connection contractor. Uh, put the condition regarding the soil erosion, the um, soil erosion sediment controls must be shown on the site plan, currently only on the architecturals. Plan to be reviewed by the engineering department for approval. So any board agrees to the engineering's approval. Will they approve that? Yes. I thought you, yes. he'll approve it on private property. Yes. So they'll look at the plans and they'll approve that the plans contain what they're requiring. So, okay, so we got the right wording. Uh, the construction hours, all materials and vehicles must be kept on property. Uh, per, per plans, per revised, per revised, per revised plans, plans that yep. will be supplied, provided, including the sediment erosion controls. Will the carport d d need a demo permit? Or is that part of the new building permit? I don't know, they'd have to figure out what the building department 
I mean, my personal understanding, I always thought carports in our bylaws were considered a landscape feature, so I don't know where the difference is. Well, it's kind of a gray area there. <laughs> no, I had somebody apply for one Open once, interpretation. That's, that's, no, that's what they, they told, that's what they told the person, but you could put on as a we'll landscape feature, but it can't be a garage. Yeah, yeah, leave it up to the building. Yeah, why yeah. Why well, I just wanted to, yeah. All right, anything else for conditions? Good. All right, so that was a motion to approve with conditions made by Jerry and second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Good luck, sir. Thank, Thank you, you for very your time much. Tonight. Okay, up next we have application 118 21, smaller 21. Uh, is it court? Court, court, no. court Real, Real Avenue <coughs> in Falmouth requesting a special permit to allow a home occupation a mobile marine. Okay, so application 118-21, David M. Smaller, 21 Court Real Abbey, Falmouth, Mass, applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant <laughs> to sections 240-162 of the Code of Falmouth to allow home occupation, mobile marine, on subject property known as 21 Court Real Ave, East Falmouth, Mass. Referrals from engineering, application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Court Real Ave is a public right of way in this area. No alterations are proposed to the right of way. Any change within the right of way would require filing a permit with the engineering division. Above reference, it appears to be outside of CONCOM jurisdiction. Water department, no comment. Planning board, no comment. Fire department, no issues as drawn. And uh, no letters in submittal. Okay. I'm sorry, before we start, uh, Scott, you'll be a voting member on this one. And for the applicant, is it Mr. Smaller? Yes, it is, sir. All right. Would you like to tell us about your project? All right, so <clears throat> my name is David Smaller, a longtime resident of Falmouth. Um, I have been in the marine industry and the service industry as for it's working on boats and installations and service and troubleshooting for about a decade now. Uh, and my wife has been in, uh, in the retail business as far as boating the community um, for over 25 years. And over the past year, we decided to open up our own business, do a little side business. Uh, we got our LLC, we are insured. Um, and what I do is I, I, I go and I service boats. I, I don't have any boats come to my property. Um, all my packages are going to be coming to my other work um, and her work. And all, so <clears throat> all of our expensive equipment are going to be done off-premises. All my work is done off-premises. And that's basically it. And I, I, I was really having a hard time trying to find out exactly what I needed to present. So this is basically just a vehicle versus... Yes, yes. Um, what and most people would think of as a home business. Y yes, but um, I, it, I only put the placards on my truck when I'm working. I have uh, magnetic placards for my business. So... I've been doing this for um, close to a year now, and nobody knows what I've been doing until now. <laughs> so it's been pretty inconspicuous as far as what I do. Uh, I, don't, I don't store anything as far as uh, marine stuff or boats or anything on my property. I'm just providing a service out of my truck. <laughs> Sounds good. Do you want to turn it over to board questions then? Or? That would be great. Yes, right. Chairman. Uh, Jerry, do you want to start off if you uh, have any questions? Do we need to know the size? Well, it's sort of like yes. it's the size of the vehicle. You know, like that. It's, it's, uh, it's 1,500, sir, uh, Silverado. So it's uh, just a pickup truck. Half-ton pickup. Anything else, Jerry? No. James? Just to be clear for the record, sir, you're not going to be servicing boats in your driveway or in your property? Nope. No, sir. Storing boats in your driveway? No, sir. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Storing any marine chemicals, paint, or anything like that? In your no, property? sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, given, that, given that it's a, a half-ton pickup, there's no commercial plates on it, right? There is commercial plates on it, yes. Um, and you won't, you won't service customers uh, without boats, you know what I'm saying? You won't have traffic, excess traffic of customers coming to meet you to make deals about services. As far as my home, no. Yeah, I, so you I, won't have any excess trips to the to and from the home. Correct, yes sir. Okay. Um, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman, thank you, sir. All right, Bob. No, I got the size of the truck, that's about it. Okay, Scott? 
No, he seems like he uh, checks all the uh, the components of the uh, bylaws, so it seems to be good fit. I'm just looking over the home occupation bylaw, making sure we didn't miss anything. Well, it's mobile, so right. yeah. most of the criteria doesn't apply. Right. I mean, it basically consists of his truck and his phone. He's parking right. the truck and yeah. uh, it's not. Like I said, I'm trying to make sure we're not missing anything. I don't think we are. Okay, I don't think we're missing anything. Turn over to public comment. Any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? Seeing none, back to the board. Chairman, I'd like motion to close. Second. All right, motion to close made by Scott, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. Motion to approve with conditions. I'd Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> motion to approve. I'm sorry. We're yeah. excited about it. What can yeah, I tell you? Sounds like it. <laughs> it's one of the it's easier easy. home occupations. <laughs> Which I had a boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pretty easy to remember. No, Dave don't. the electronics guy. That's the name of my business. So. <laughs> all right. So that was a motion to approve with conditions made by Bob. And I'll give the second to James. Thanks for that, Scott. All right. Findings. I guess 240 162 and 240 216. Uh, home occupation only consists of a uh, half ton pickup, commercial pickup. There's no servicing of boats or no storage of boats or other minute equipment on the property in relation to the business. No added trips to and from other than other than that one vehicle. Yep. No chemicals stored? No, not them. All my chemicals are stored, excuse me, yep. sorry, uh, no. uh, on my work at Pier 37. So. So I think that's a good finding too to make that the um, other items he uses with his business are stored off site at a commercial property. Yes. All right. Anything else for findings? Conditions? Uh, that if any conditions change or the business gets bigger, they have to come back before the board to at least express or, yes. or modify the permit. Say you say they went to. A, a, a vehicle greater than 28,000 pounds, whatever the, the, the requirement yep. is, uh, or added another vehicle, or the, the circumstances change mm -hmm. significantly, they would have to come back before so we'd, for an amendment to the permit, I would suggest. So we'd condition exactly. it mainly for this one vehicle as described, the half ton pickup. Right. He currently has commercial plates on. All right, fair enough. We'd condition it, no additional vehicles in relation to the business. I would just condition it that. If he wants to get like a 2500 as opposed to 15, that, I don't have a problem with that. If, it, if it's something that requires a CDL license, that's I think I that, that, okay, that to yeah. be the threat. Okay. Right, so what do we do that's that? That's where it kicks in. All right. Anything else? All right, so uh, no. No? All right. So that was motion approved with conditions made by Bob, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Best Thank luck, you sir. so much luck, for sir. your time. Luck, Thanks. Okay, up next we have application 119-21 Warborden, 3 Clark Street in East Falmouth requesting a special permit to construct a 30 by 60 foot accessory structure. Uh, application 119. Excuse me one second. Yep. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I've worked on uh, a few jobs with Mr. Warburton 20 years ago. Um, I just wanted you to know that I know him outside of this hearing, uh, but I don't think it will affect my judgment on the on the outcome. All right, thank you for that disclosure, Scott. I, s I assume the applicant would be okay. All right, it is a question. Guess I have we'll to see. <laughs> yeah. You might want to think about that. No, no. Oh man. <laughs> just, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Jerry's easy tonight. All right. Go ahead, Bob. All right, so application 119-21, Eric C. and Lauren Warburton, 3 Clark Street, East Falmouth, Mass., has applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-23G1B of the Code of Falmouth to construct a 30 by 60 accessory structure on the subject property known as 3 Clark Street, East Falmouth, Mass. For referrals. Uh, the application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Clark Street, Old Barnstable Road, and Meadowview Drive are public rights of way in this area. The new driveway is proposed for Meadowview Drive. An approved driveway permit and the required bond are on file at the engineering division. 
The applicant must consult with the town's tree warden prior to the removal of any trees within the right of way. We request that the following two conditions be included in any approval. Prior to the removal of any trees in the town right of way, the applicant shall consult with the town tree warden. The applicant shall complete the work as approved by the engineering division in the driveway permit. Any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. The project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property or butters or public rights of way. We recommend the board add a condition that requires the addition of dry wells for stormwater infiltration measures for the new roof area at a minimum. While there is a driveway permit for the project that includes erosion and sediment controls, the engineering division is the permitting authority for these. We request the following condition be added in any approval. Construction of this project shall follow the town soil erosion and sediment control standard conditions document, which can be found on the engineering division's page on the town website. Both project is out of CONCOM's jurisdiction. Fire department has no issues as drawn. Professor has no comment. Uh, from Cahal's Water, uh, there is town water available in Meadowview Drive from an existing 8-inch PVC main. The applicant proposes to have plumbing in the accessory structure. Oh, if the applicant proposes to have plumbing in the accessory structure, they will need a separate service connection independent of the existing one that comes from Clark Street. Planning has no comment. Nothing additional. All right, and for this project to be funding, Jerry is the voting member. Um, just, just, just to start, just for a bit, I did make a visit to the property, and I just wanted to state that I couldn't get access, but I think I saw where the where the stakes were. Um, I couldn't access it from Meadowview just because of the the trees and the shrubbery, and and I'm, there just wasn't somebody at home at the time that it was. All right. Okay, and for the applicant. How are you guys? I wanted to thank you for the opportunity uh, for me to present this application to you guys. My family, my two boys, Nick and Jake. Um, I did bring a thumb drive. It has a lot of just repetitive stuff that's all in the files in front of you. Um, there is a bunch of pictures that we also put on that thumb drive of work we've done to the property since we have moved in. A lot of cleanup. Um, but that being said, if you'd like to see it, I can insert it and try and figure it out and fumble, <laughs> fumble around it and try and figure it out, but probably wouldn't be a good thing. A um, little backstory, uh, born and raised here on the Cape, uh, went through the family school systems. Uh, my family and I, we ran a bed and breakfast in McCoy for many years, right on McCoy Highway. Uh, it was a cottage inn. Uh, it was a very fun place to grow up and uh, learned a lot of structure, taking care of the place, uh, growing up through the school systems. Um, attended Upper Cape Tech, I uh, went to carpentry. My son is there now. Uh, he's in marine services. Uh, I've worked for a, a few local builders throughout my career and learned a bunch. And I'm now self-employed and a small business owner. Um, we have previously moved from uh, Seven Country Club Lane, which was right off of Old Barnstable, two minutes down the road from where we live now at 3 Clark Street. Um, initially, when we first got there, it was a property cleanup. The property has been a rental property for as long as I can remember, decades, long time. So there was um, many containers full of debris, whether it be rodent infestation or drive-by disposals of what have you. But anyways, so obviously when we got there, the cleanup, but there was initial shock because we had done some clearing of the property to access the full square footage that was provided on this lot. Um, so I understand that, and it was obviously a shock to people. Um, it's been that way for a long, long time. Um, so like I said, the removal of all the debris was about three containers full of just rubbish, all kinds of stuff. Um, I noted on the uh, rodent infestation, there was a couple of sheds out back that were dilapidated and just inches upon inches of just excrement and just nasty waste. Um, we did remove all that safely, remediate it, and uh, we still continue to fight the rodent problem. Um, the dump site, as far as for the land that was cleared on the back of the property, all of people abutting the property throughout the years just used it as a dump site for debris, leaves, grass clippings, sticks, stuff like that. All of that was removed by us when we cleaned the property, obviously. 
Um, we did start fencing on the property, um, around the front of the property, and started to go down Meadowview. But without us knowing what we can and can't do with the back of the property, we didn't know where to continue the fencing. Um, and yeah. What does the property need to provide? Natural buffer. Okay. So we go to lot size. I mean, the lot size as it sits right now, it's 6, uh, 66,315 square foot. The house size that is there right now is 1,050 square foot. Uh, we're proposing to put the accessory structure on at 1,800 square foot. Um, to my knowledge, we are able to build up to 15,000 square foot with the size lot that we are currently living on at 3 Clark Street. Um, the building we're proposing to build is a metal construction. It is a powder-coated, galvanized, corrugated steel. Um, the walls will be in white. The roof will be in black, along with black trim. Um, as far as insulation factors, um, as far as the uh, corrugated steel in the powder-coated finish, it provides the same sound barriers, if not better, than, say, a T111 plywood or a shingle or a cedar clap. Um, um, the structure, as you pointed, will have dry wells as requested for any water runoff from the structure. Um, the main use of this building is for the place of all things pertaining to the property, whether it be the skid steer we have for the property. Between the three licensed drivers on the property, we have five vehicles. Uh, we came from an HOA, real tight knit grass always cut, leaves taken care of, you name it. So we take pride in our property and we want to keep it that way. And this will provide us a place to do so. Put it away, nice, neat, tidy. Um, the main thing is we're very excited to take this property back to what it once was, a family owned property where we can grow and teach our kids how to do certain things, how to fix basic items that is not being taught these days. Um, We'll have a garden, we'll have stuff of that nature. Um, sorry if I'm getting emotional, but uh, <laughs> it's very exciting. And uh, we look forward to growing as a family there and we hope that we can do so in a manner that, I mean, fits everybody's needs and wants and understandings. Anything else to add? All right, thank you. I will turn it over to board questions. Uh, Scott, anything? Bob? Um, so in the structure itself, is there going to be any heat or water service that you're looking at? There will be no plumbing. Okay, no, plumbing. no heating right off the bat. Electrical will come down the line, but right now it will just be for storage. It will be basic electrical. Um, and I know you mentioned some of the items. So um, would you be storing any kind of commercial vehicles? or? My work vehicle that I personally own will be parked on the back of the property and occasionally be put in the building. Yes. And on the, um, I'm looking at the site plan where you show the building, um, and I can see where you, where you have your driveway entrance on Meadowview Drive. Yep. Um, I don't see an actual kind of a driveway depicted. So when you put something in there as a driveway, are you thinking of asphalt or just the asphalt up to the high point of the lot line coming off of Meadowview, and then from that point going forward will be a crushed stone. Okay, so the main, so the property itself is going to be mainly crushed stone yes. for your parking and driveway. And other than that, it's just personal use. There wouldn't be a home business at all. Correct. No commercial use at all. That's all I have. All right. Scott. So there are no future plans to home-based business permit? Not at all. Okay. Anything else, Scott? No, that's all I have. All right. James? In lieu of this proposed project, are you taking down the two existing sheds? The existing sheds are gone. We have constructed a new shed that should be on the plot plan. That was provided to you guys. One of the sheds was just a roof on a ground. It had already collapsed and well, was yeah. not even usable. So the new one that you have is the one at, closer to the house in that front corner near Correct. Old Barnstable? Over closer to Old Barnstable, yep. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Sherry, anything? Uh, no questions, as you said. Sometime in the future, you may be put electrical in. Yeah, we're looking to put a 50-amp panel in just for basic wall plugs. There'll be no 
industrial machinery, you know, nothing of that nature. So you may have to come back, you probably will have to come back to us okay. for a change when you do that. Okay. I don't think we can approve it now, can we? No, you can add, you can allow electricity to be added. Yeah, we don't need okay, we don't good. Yeah. control electrical. Appreciate it. All right. No questions for me. So public comment. Any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? No. Come on up. Yep. I put my paperwork, so. Anyways, my name is Catherine Snyder. I live at 660 Barnstable Road. I've been there with my family for over 50 years. I knew Victor. I seen the property change and grow um, for, you know, many years and things like that. We've had gardens back there ourselves and things like that. My problem that I have is that um, he ripped the property clear of any, like, barrier to any um, my existing property and my neighbor's property. So I will be looking at a 20 foot steel, I sent in paperwork, um, I emailed up um, about a before and after what my backyard looked like. So at the corner of my property, when I look out my back door, I will see 20 feet of steel. Um, there used to be an oak tree there, there used to be um, other shrubs and like that that would have been a buffer, there's nothing there is absolutely gone. He stripped it right to, if you could, right to the property line up against the fence. The old shed that he talked about used to belong to my father, Victor and Arthur, whatever, they put it there and moved it back there and it just kinda, that's how Victor left it. Um, so my concerns are is that the view on my back property where I sit and I have enjoyed for 50 some odd years is now going to be a view of a large steel building. I feel like my privacy has been, and the enjoyment of my backyard has been taken away. I totally understand and express the gardening part of it and enjoying all that stuff, because I do that myself. It's just that it's such an extreme. It's from a little, tiny, little neighborhood that had nice little houses and things like that. And we do also enjoy and appreciate our properties and take care of our properties. What Victor did was what Victor did. We had no control of what Victor did on that property or how it looked. But my property is neat and clean as well. <coughs> and somebody else is surrounding. The other thing too is that building is bigger than my house itself and other properties surrounding it. And my neighbor has no escape from it. It's literally in her backyard. That's their summer home where they enjoy to go. And there's gonna be a steel wall right up against her property, 12 feet away. There's no buffers, there's no tree lines, there's no cedars, there's no nothing to kind of make it disappear. It's there in your face. And if you're looking to construct something for your, say, your storage things and things like that, then why isn't it closer to your property line why is it closer to where you need to and you can access it better? Why so far down back at the property? Um, Mr. Augusta, he has a building, but you can't even see that it exists. It's all wood and it's covered in cedars. Um, also, the property, I don't know if this is anything, it's listed as a significant historical. Um, so I don't know if that's why he built back behind, further away from it. I have no idea. It's just. Those are my concerns. Um, it's just, it's a large steel commercial building in a small neighborhood. It takes away from our neighborhood. I, like I said, I heard the gardening part and things like that. That's what I enjoy too, but I just think it's a door for other things to come if it happens. It's a really large building. That's all I can say. So, Mr. Chairman, um, mm -hmm. my apologies to Ms. Snyder, but she did have a letter submitted here that I didn't see. So I'm just, even though she made a statement, I'm just going to read this quickly. Sure. And it, and it did, and it did come with uh, one, two, three, uh, you know, the four pictures that were shown. Uh, my name is Catherine Snyder. I live at 66 Old Barnesville Road. My concerns of the commercial size building going up 12 feet off the back corner of my property. 
One, the building is larger than most homes surrounding it. Two, it is a visual obstruction. All natural buffers like trees and shrubs have been removed right to all property lines, so it's right in your line of vision. Uh, three, noise, steel buildings radiate more sound than your average wood or concrete building. So that means any power tools, air gun running or revving vehicles will be heard uh, 10 times more than louder than the two abutting neighbors. Four, the feeling of privacy is gone and the enjoyment of being uh, spending time in your own backyard is gone. Five, nearby property values go down because you have a 30 by 60 steel building near your property. Six, the possible emotional toll this may have on some neighbors in the neighborhood. The neighborhood will be changed and not for the good. Uh, 15 Clark Street is still listed on the significant historical list as number three. And it's 30 by 30 storage shed is all wood and covered by 20 feet red cedar. Number three Clark Street is under two acres and wants to put a 30 by 60 steel storage with no buffer or natural tree line. The conversation that keeps coming up from number three Clark Street that concerns me when this building is up. Uh, they can't wait to open up a workshop for the boys that will work on cars. The permit states for vehicle or storage and not a machine shop. Also, there was talk about opening an animal shelter. How many buildings will be put up on this property and how big? So that, I just wanted to read that in the record because I missed it. Sure. Um, I do have a question for the administrator, and I think it does reference um, significant buildings, but I think that has to do with the main house as being on a teardown right. list that wouldn't actually re apply to the new construction. All right, thank you, Bob. Uh, any other public comments, any other questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? Hi, I'm Addie Drolet from 56 Meadowview. And I want to welcome the Warburtons to the neighborhood. I sincerely mean that. But I have to okay. say... Sorry, Mr. Drolet, you've got to speak I, I, to the I, board. Forgive me, sir, but I... Individually in the crowd. ...wanted to make it a point. This is an oversized building, in my opinion, 1,800 square feet. It is larger than every other house on Meadowview, with the exception of perhaps one. It's very close to, I feel terrible for the people on Old Barnstable who are going to be totally shadowed. The sun, they're not going to get any sun in their backyards once this building is built. You take a look at it. I'm a little surprised that you couldn't get through the foliage to get to it because it's very easily walkable. I didn't want to go through all the brambles. Understood. I just, I don't but want to change it. <laughs> <laughs> but they're actually kind of wild roses and really pretty in the summer, so, and they smell the fantastic. I guess I'd like to see this size of this project reduced. I'd like to see a wood structure. I'd like to see something that looks more like a barn that would fit into the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I think what you permitted on the other side of Meadowview for Mr. Augusta looks perfect and it fits right in. I'd also request that the applicant provide a landscape plan to show some screening along Meadowview because he did not leave a buffer on either side of his property. And yes, it was a shock. He has a right to do it, I totally understand it, but I think in keeping with the neighborhood, it would behoove him to suggest that there be some evergreens planted. That's all I have to say right now. May, may I? Sure. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I did my site visit this morning, and uh, I believe the Benitos have a huge building right across the street from this property. And then if you go down, if you go down Clark Street towards uh, John Parker Road, there's another very good size. Uh, garage right next to the house about halfway down. Have there been any complaints about those in the past that you're aware of? On Clark Street? No. I believe the one on Clark Street has had complaints about it in the I'm past. Just, I'm just curious. I know that yeah. it's been there a long time and I didn't know. There's not a lot going on there anymore. No, but it's still there. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else out there? Any other public comment? I'm Tom Stanton. I live at 30 Meadowview Drive. I live diagonally across from where the building will be built. Uh, I live there with my wife, Lisa. I should mention that. Um, we reside at 30 Meadowview Drive. We are opposed to the zoning board's granting approval or potential granting approval of the application for the Warburtons to construct a 30 by 60 foot congreg congregate, con con well, a steel commercial style building. Um, at their Clark Street residence. The structure may be 
address the three clock street, but is proposed to be built 200 feet into, the pro into their property with the front of the building facing Meadowview Drive. Further, since the building will be along Meadowview Drive, we feel it does not, and, and I'll say, I'm gonna use some terms that maybe I'm not using correctly, conform to the style and construction of other residential homes on Meadowview Drive. The structure will be out of character with the rest of the neighborhood. Overall, the footprint of the proposed structure is 1,800 square feet. The size of this proposed structure is approximately 20 to 30% larger than any home on the street. I live in a 1,300 square foot home. This thing is bigger than my house. Again, it will be out of character with the rest of the neighborhood. Also, too, we are concerned about the intended use of the building. Currently, the Warburtons are storing on their property construction equipment, such as a utility back commercial vehicle that they use for their business, landscape style trailer, a bobcat machine, flatbed body for a truck, as well as multiple, some of them topped, some of them not, cars, and, and two golf carts. We are concerned that they will be relocating this group of vehicles out of their si site, line of sight, which is right behind the house, to the line of sight of my front porch. Consequently, we will have to look through our picture window in the morning with my cup of coffee to see this construction yard or contract yard. Further, we're concerned as it's intention to operate it as a commercial, commercial property or for their commercial use. Also, I, I don't understand why they can't put the property, this building up on the front of their property where they would have access to their established driveway to Clock Street, which, in your point made, made by Mr. Zalitsky, is that there are buildings similar to this on Clock Street which would make it a more appropriate location, not 200 feet into my neighborhood. In closing, we are asking the ZBA to preserve the integrity and value of our neighborhood on Meadowview Drive, because where the Warburtons propose to construct this building, we are strongly opposed, and we would, strongly oppose, we would like that you would not grant them this special permit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else for public comment, sir? <clears throat> Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Michael Burns. I live on 20 Meadowview Drive. And um, I'll try to avoid repetitive comments, but um, based on the, the plans I've seen, I'm going to be looking across my street from my picture window at a 60 foot wall of three garage doors. I don't think that fits into the, to the neighborhood quite frankly. I'm concerned about lighting. This commercial building that belongs in an industrial park might have lighting on the outside of it that might run all night. I don't know that. It's up to him, I guess. Are we going to allow that? I don't know. <clears throat> so, lighting is a concern. The view that I have, it's out of character of the whole neighborhood. You're taking Meadowview Drive and making it look like Clark Street. That's all I've got to say, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Last call for public comment. Anyone else? Yes, sir. My name is uh, Richard Augusta. I live at 12 Meadowview Drive. I also have a house at 15 Clark Street and 19 Clark Street. I just wanted to say that uh, there was a lot of problems with the commercial building across the street from tw uh, 15 Clark Street. It was a spot zoning issue where Benito had it as commercial, residential, and industrial. I remember <laughs> when I was a kid, he used to park a lot of heavy equipment there, and Joe Netto made it a big problem, so that's why that's kind of abandoned. And you can see, Mr. Zelensky, it's not really appealing anymore to the neighborhood. 
you know, when the last guy who rented it uh, didn't pay the bills, they ended up putting the rocks around it to keep all the drug dealers out of there. Not saying that, but, you know, I have no problem with Mr. Warburton's building. I have a building. I built a building in character of the neighborhood. It matches my building. You know, I, I want to support him with a building because everyone has the right to do whatever they want. I just wish that maybe uh, he'd build something more in character of the property. And if he moved it left, right, center, we're all going to see it. You know, maybe he can put some trees up in the back, put some trees up in the front. You know, we're all neighbors. We all want to be on good speaking terms. I plowed Mr. Warburton out. I've been nervous about this for a few weeks. But, you know, I just want everyone to be happy. And maybe he'll reconsider his metal building, go with a building that might match his house with maybe some shingles or some vinyl siding. I have a metal roof on my building. You know, I just uh, want to be neighborly and maybe he'll rethink his metal building. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else for public comment? Sir? Thank you, Floyd. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ralph Thayer. I live at 75 Middle View Drive. I'm all the way down the end. I can't see this property. But like they all say, the size of the building is not going with the neighborhood. And also the metal construction. You know, there's other people who have put up garages before. They made them look like a barn or made it look like a house from the front and bring the vehicles in the back and nobody would know it or in the side. But I don't think <coughs> a 30 by 60 metal building will be doing anything for our property values. I mean, we just got our street all cleaned up and I just don't think it goes with the neighborhood. If you could scale it down a little bit, I mean, it's his property. I think you should reconsider the design of the building. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think that does it for public comment. Mr. Warburton. Sure, go, go, go right ahead. <coughs> to touch on the point of value of homes going down, um, we had spoke with a realtor and requested a letter on her behalf, our behalf, whatever you may say, as far as her opinion. And that's exactly what it is, just an opinion. Um, but. So if I could just read this in briefly, just because you put it in. Um, it's to Eric and Lorna Warburton from Emily Swartz, owner of Coastal Homes Realty Group. I, Emily Swartz, owner of Coastal Homes Realty Group, write this letter to address concerns regarding the application to erect a 30 by 60 accessory garage and property located at 3 Clark Street. As the previous listing agent representing the Victor M. Ciambelli Revocable Family Trust at the time it was conveyed to you, I would like to offer the following professional opinion. Three Clark Street has been owned by the same family for many generations dating back to 1800s prior to your acquisition of the property. Historically, the property was used as a farm and there was a large barn towards the rear of the parcel. As of late, the property has become run, run down. There were two dilapidated sheds at the rear of the property and the yard was filled with miscellaneous trash. Since your purchase of the property, you have cleared much of the lot in an er effort to revive its original use. Due to the work performed, the property value has increased tremendously, also increasing the value of the abutters. In my professional opinion, I do not believe your proposed project would negatively impact the neighborhood. Um, let me know if you have any further questions. Also, if I could touch on uh, the building size. Um, yes, it is 1,800 square foot. We felt that was what was needed to house all our stuff in a manner so to keep the property in a presentable fashion. Um, there's a few houses around the area, Meadowview, number 37. Uh, this is just offline. It's 2,066 square foot. Number 20, Meadowview, 1,288 square foot. Number 15 is 1,862 square foot plus the shop. And then on Old Barnstable, number 66, it is 918 square foot, but number 70, which it'll be abutting the shop, the back of the building, it comes in at 1454 square foot. So, I mean, yes, it is on the larger side. But like I said, we base that off of what we thought our needs would be to keep the property in a manner so that would be fitting with the neighbors. Um, the natural buffer. At what point does a landowner have to provide a natural buffer uh, when lot lines are abutting neighbors. There's no common space in between. Yes, we did take down a lot of um, dead 
decayed trees. There was a lot of holly, a lot of cedar, a lot of everything we left. A lot of mature trees, but yes, it does look like it's stripped. Um, like I said, I already touched on the noise complaint. Um, the privacy is the same as the natural buffer. Um, there will be no windows on the structure. Um, but we touched on the property value. Um, and then, yeah, we already touched on that one, sorry. No. Yes. Um, Jim, may I ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Walburton. Is there a reason why you can't move that building somewhere else on your lot? Yes. We Sorry. Um, so the we have planned the entire property, obviously, in our heads. Um, so we are going to have um, goats and ducks and chickens on the to the left of the house. That's already been fenced in for that. And then behind that is going to be a giant garden. We're going to grow our own vegetables and things like that. And then I'm going to have, um, well, obviously, permit required. Um, we want to have a barn so that we can have four stalls. Um, my intention is to adopt animals, retired racehorses, and give them their forever home. Will that require a special permit as well? I'm most likely assuming yes. OK. Um, so that, that segues into my next question. You both realize that we also have a responsibility to the abutting neighbors and the neighborhoods around us, and we have to consider that as well. Um, have you given any thought? Have you spoken to any of the neighbors one-on-one -on -one, in a group setting to try to help negotiate your position with the neighbors to help them, or is it just all or nothing? No, it's not all or nothing. Have it we have been and in there a short matter of time, and when we hit the ground running, I have made attempts a couple times, not so a give, lot. So give, not to interrupt you, but mm -hmm. to, given what was said tonight and some of the neighbors' concerns, mm -hmm. have you ever entertained a wooden structure or maybe something a little smaller or something like that? Again, I ask you, is it one of these deals where it's all or nothing? Yeah. Because you have to understand we have to take everybody's uh, uh, opinion and concerns into consideration. Agreed. I mean, okay. so to be God's honest truth, obviously, I believe you. Wood, bi wood buildings are beautiful. This is what we can afford: is a metal building to house all this. So, it's either going to be sitting out there for everyone to see, or we ha hide it away in this building. Okay. All right, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So thank, you. Sure. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you. you. I'm just going to note for the record that it is 9:30 uh, according to James Job. Right. According Mr. to the board's, the board's rules, uh, we do. Uh, I'll, Mr. Chair, I want to make a motion. We extend the board's business till 1030. All right. So I'll we'll second Mr. Morris's motion, sir. James's motion to extend to 1030. Second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we'll keep on going. We'll, hopefully we'll end sooner than 1030. But anyway. Yeah, so, so actually, I, I've got a question for Mr. Warburton. Sorry, I, Mr. I, Warburton. I hate to make you keep sitting. You know, that was just a housekeeping measure for, um, for me. So I didn't mean to make you go sit back down. So, uh, so this property in general, is this the zone single family residence or is it zone agricultural? It's zoned RC. And um, I know you said you, you put the building on the back of the, what was the thought process to put it in the back of the property with it and adding a second driveway versus just having one driveway access from the front? So to divide it in a way that we could use the property for, like I said, we have the front part um, for immediate family then um, the center section more open for entertaining and then the back trying to put everything in a place where it could be neat and tidy all right, I mean, so no so other you, reasoning you, than that all right so you wouldn't want it closer to the house itself and just keep the back of the property more for the other uses that you could do that if that is an option um, w would you consider adding any kind of buffering tree I mean a lot of times people put in arborvitaes or tree lines yeah, like I mentioned before we do plan on uh, fencing in the whole property but until we knew what avenue we were going to go down as far as how far we could take this, the structure, where we could do it, the size of it, we didn't know. But we will definitely entertain putting up fencing, um, trees, shrubbery, any natural buffer that appeals to the abutters. And my other question is where, the, where it is so far back on the property, what is your lighting plan for back there? Um, at the moment, it would just be either a solar um, LED light, either that we put on the outside of the building that would be um, photo cell operated or I mean like I said electrical would not be added to the building until a later date so 
any lighting would be just on a photo cell timer sense manner. And and uh, and this is just because you, um, I guess your wife added the uh, additional vision for the eventual property. Um, you do realize that um, if you went forward with something like that, you would probably need to see if you comply with other permits, and it might be something you may not be able to do. Yeah, we bought this property with the vision of long time down the road, just bring it back to a mature state. But I mean, that's nothing we're going to do right away i mean if it's even possible well that's what i mean just yes. so that my question is what what do you mean by what we might not be able to well the property is owned rc so single family residential um you can get a permit for a detached building like you're doing now you mentioned you may want another detached building which is a barn mm -hmm. you mentioned maybe taking in animals that aren't your personal use animals and oh, it's no. not zoned residential i mean it's not zoned agricultural by, the, I mean, they'd be our personal pets, so I don't know what you mean by... You mentioned that you would like to take animals in? From shelters, rescue yeah, them. Well, there, there, this are by, will... there are bylaws. I'm just saying that there, 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 three dogs yeah, there, there, there are bylaws permit. for that, so you may Correct. want to and just... Correct, I've already you're... talked to um, the health department and uh, animal control. I know the I have the list of what I require for a stable um, building structure and the permitting for... Um, when you get horses, you have to get each horse a license. Um, and have they told you you would need any kind of additional special permits? So you just may want to, just so you know with yeah. what your vision is. I, I just yeah. For a month before we even put in an offer, I did all the research on what we can and cannot do as far as that it's historical. However, it's not bound by historical law because it's not in a historical district. So the only permission we would need for anything on the property is if we actually tear down the home yeah the historical that significance that was mentioned that's only because it's on a list right and it means you have to wait nine months to a year to demolish it unless you get an okay from the historical society I'm, right. I'm not as concerned as much about that um do you have any kind of a landscape plan or we did not have one like i said we were waiting to see what would see be that. done but we like i said we have no problem putting up natural buffers in a evergreen style fencing that appeals to neighbors i mean things of that nature we got in so far at the end of the year, we did as much as we could before the ground just froze on us, so. Okay, that's all I have. Just seeking clarification on the lighting, would it be possible to have that on a timer so it wasn't on yes. all night? Timer, yes. motion, what, whatever it would be, yeah. Well, we'll keep the motion part out of it because that could be tripped up by many different things. Uh, okay. yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anything else from the board? Should we go into some open discussion? Uh, I mean, if, if it's a possibility we could deny it because of concerns of the neighbors. Uh, or we could have some open discussion of things we might like added, like arborvitaes and things like that, assuming we go to approve it. If the board doesn't want an open discussion, I mean, he mentioned, the applicant mentioned willingness to put in buffering trees and landscaping. Maybe we could ask for a landscape plan. Yeah, it might be fair to have a yeah, so, uh, so just point. from the comments this evening, if, if they were going with this plan, I would want to see some kind of a landscape plan. I'd want to see some kind of a um, suggestion of buffering and plantings. I'd want to see a lighting plan. I'd like to see a depiction of whatever the driveway and parking area is going to be from Meadowview to the structure so we know what the percentages are for impervious and pervious surfaces. Um, you know, the use we know tonight, I, I also would plan on continuing this anyways only because I couldn't access the actual property. I want to make sure that I can see now from the, you know, what the actual stakes are and what the effects are from the adjacent homeowners. I would assume that the applicants tonight hearing the comments by the abutters um, would want to see, um, you know, what kind of things they could alleviate if they went with this current plan on what the abutters are asking for. I would certainly like to see the applicant uh, display a little more willingness to, to switch this up a little bit and move the building um, in order to appease um, some of the uh, the abutters. Um, it, it is a big lot, but it's a, it's a challenging lot because it's big and it's long. And your abutters have some valid points about looking out their windows and seeing nothing. So. I was trying to encourage you to be creative in a way to place this and obviously your wife has a plan for what she wants to have there but sometimes 
you have to be a little pliable when you're you're looking for a special permit that affects so many other people other than yourselves. Yeah. You understand? I, I do mean, understand. Oh, while we are a board of relief, again, we have a responsibility to everybody in that neighborhood to try to do right by everyone. So you may want to consider that, and that's just a suggestion. I'm not telling you what to do. But you've heard everything in the room tonight on both sides of the desk. So you may want to take a little time. You're going to get a continuance, it looks like, gentlemen, right? Yeah, we're going to need one. To just try to rework this a little bit, maybe speak to your neighbors. Again, just a suggestion. I'm not telling you you have to do it. Sometimes these things have to be massaged out in order to make it work for everybody, and, and, and I hope you understand that. No, I fully understand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Scott. All right. Anyone else from the board? Uh, just a quick addition. I'd also like to see a little more details of exactly what's being stored in there, because if you're going to be doing something with, um, you know, bobcats or on trailers, and you're going to be using that MetaView side as an exit, you know, that's when the material is important about, you know, what are you driving on? Because then you get, you know, dirt issues with Meadowview Road or that kind of an issue. So if you could just come up, you know, with a, with a little more detailed description of exactly what's going to be stored and what the, what the usage is going to be back there, it might help. Yep. Well, the Bobcat and the tractor are only for on-farm use. He doesn't use that in construction. So those would never leave the property in the trailer. So that, so we'd have to have that very, so if, yeah. if that's the plans, then you would, you know, in the application, you may want to modify to just say these are these are you know vehicles that I'm using on property. Um, they're only staying on property and they're not exiting the property. I mean that because we can actually condition that. If that's the statement that you're making that I'm only going to use this on property, mm -hmm. I'm not exiting, yep. and that's not an issue for you. We can condition it that those vehicles cannot come in and out on that. They have to stay on the property itself. Okay. <clears throat> I do have one quick like ever. I mean, what if like we have to send it out to get repaired? Then? Yeah. So. It's however you want to handle it. I, I, I'm just trying to give you a hint. You're, you, you, the way you've laid out this structure, it's no longer access from Clark Street, which already has an entrance. So you're creating a new exit and entrance on a side street of a development where the side of the street you're exiting on is what everybody was staring at, and that's probably why you got you know trees, because that's what they've looked at for all these years. The, you know, that they, there isn't another row of houses on that side. So that's what they're facing. So, you know, there is going to be more use off of that street. I'm not saying you can't do it. It's legally probably accessible because it's a public street now. Um, but the more things you can alleviate with that to help some of the neighbors on Meadowview, I think the easier you're going to have in the long run, even when you get a permit. Um, and there's probably some things that you can, you know, make some changes with or, you know, talk to the neighbors about, is there a specific suggestion? And okay, yeah, maybe I can't do this, but maybe this I could do. You know, does this make a difference? Um, when you see a large parcel like this, and I know you have a vision, which is fine, but when we see it and we see a plan and we just see everything vacant and then something pushed to the back, it appears more of a commercial style building and really has its only entrance and exit on a different side street. It, it kind of hits a lot of, you know, bells and whistles kind of go off. Is this, you know, a separate use building or you know, why isn't it on the other end? So you might even on your plan want to say, look, my future, my, here's an idea of a plan and this is what my future ideas are and this is why I want to put it there because I need this other area for other things, you know, in the long run. Okay, anything else from the board? So we are looking at a continuation. Uh, March 24th, if that works. That would work for me. Does March 24th work for you to come back? Yeah, we'll make it work. Okay. Right. Then I would uh, make a motion to continue this uh, to March 24th, 2022. And just as a comment, I would like to go and visit at some point. So I don't yeah. know if there's certain, you could let the administrator know if there's certain times of the day, even if you left the gate open, that we can just go in and out. It's and a clip. <laughs> yeah, I just don't. Yeah. I don't like to touch stuff. There's on no there. dogs <laughs> there now, right? What? There's no dogs. No dogs. In the house. We have two dogs, but they're in the house. <laughs> but they're okay. good, right? Yes. Oh yeah. Because I don't run as well as I used yeah. to. Neither do they. They're old. Motion, motion is on the table for continuance. Just need a second for that. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank and we'll you, everybody. We'll see you back here on was it March 24th. Thank March 24th. You. Uh, and uh, we took care of uh, Shea, so we're open meeting. Yeah, that does it for our new hearing, so we'll have a minute, let everyone filter out. Oh, can I give you
Yes, thank you. I'll give it to the uh, 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 Three minutes for to clear up, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. We'll say, everyone, we, we still have items on our agenda to address, so if you could all filter out, please. Thank you. So on to our open meeting items. We do have voting the minutes from January 13th, January 27th, and February 10th. And we're tabling the 10th. Tabling the 10th. All right. As for January 13th. Um, I'm abstaining because I wasn't there. Motion to approve. All right. Motion approved by Scott Peterson. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Abstentions. Uh, one abstention. I wasn't here on the 13th. All right. So that passes. Voting the minutes for January 27th, 2020, 2022. Sorry. The minutes of January 27th, 2022. I'll second Mr. Morse's motion. Right, motion approved made by James, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. And we're tabling February 10th. Under our second item, reviewing the draft decision of 85-21 Seacoast Tower Development, LLC, 50 Highfield Drive, Falmouth. Voting members on this project are myself, Scott Zelensky, Bob Dugan, James Morse. Jerry Patamas with a vote anticipated. Has everyone had a chance to review the draft decision? A question, is this consistent with the red line that you sent out? Yep. Oh. Uh, so there were, I think, um, a couple of items for the board to discuss or consider one of which was that the board had proposed that any new carriers going on the new tower would be subsequent to the existing carriers being moved on to the new tower. The applicant has suggested that they'd have a preference to do that move for the old carriers and new carriers to be affixed to the tower at the same proximate time that would cut down on uh, tow, you know, uh, crane activity, et cetera. Weren't they, weren't they concerned with, with a shutdown of the system, though, while they were doing that? Well, I don't know if you want to talk to the applicant, but I would assume what will happen that's what is, I remembered. you know, there will be some coordination, obviously, so that there's no downtime for cell coverage. But the question was whether you had proposed a condition that there be no new carrier added to the new tower until the existing carriers were moved over. Yeah, I, I think my main concern was on the existing carriers that that they be relocated first, so then they could be disconnected before you added a new carrier. Right. But I think, and not to speak for the applicant, but I think what they were saying was that their preference would be, while they have the crane there, to put all the equipment up at the same time. So do we have a time limit on this at all? Because it's open-ended. I think the only time limit you put up was for the removal of the old tower. No, but I, so I mean with the, new, with the new wording that new carriers may be added to the new tower with existing carriers from the old tower, mm -hmm. so. Chairman, would it be appropriate to open, reopen the meeting for a few questions, or no? <coughs> well, the problem, yeah, the problem with that being is that we, we closed the hearing, and it's noticed as an open meeting okay. item, it's not a. Okay. So my only concern is that you're not running new carriers activated on a new tower, and then just waiting and keeping the old tower, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think part of the problem and part of the purpose for the new tower was that the old tower cannot accommodate the equipment that the carriers now require. So the, the idea that the carriers would sort of linger on the old tower. So you have a 90-day anyways with number 16. Right. So no matter what, within 90 days, everything has to be transferred and I th over? I think through testimony, Bob, they, they explained that yeah. already, that that would be done within that time. Yeah, so 16 gives you the time span that would cover 17. So. 
So I guess the question to you is, is it acceptable that a new carrier could be located on the new tower simultaneously with the old carriers, as opposed to bringing a train back for a future date to add another carrier in? Was, is, that, is that out of convenience to, to the applicant or inconvenience to the, the neighborhood? I, I guess that would be the question. I mean, it seems I think we should go with what was proposed. Which if that means, I mean, every, that, that, was, that was public notice on how it was going to go down and through testimony, the applicant. No, I'm just saying that the board had proposed a condition that a future carrier only be located on the new tower after the old carriers. And that's work. what we propose. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, right. I think, I think so I'm just asking, do you want to keep with that or would you be willing to allow a new I think carrier? I just said that. I, yeah. I would want to go with what we, we yeah. proposed and okay. we asked for. Okay. How is that? In um, personally, I mean. No, no, no. I, I mean, I, I don't know how that may be inconvenient to the neighbors. Uh, it might be as convenient to them to have the crane in and out at the same time. I know what you're saying, but... But, that, but that's up to us now to decide because the hearing's closed. And no, 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 that's why I'm asking you. you well, so then I think it's cleaner if we go with what was proposed and wasn't a, there was no opposition to it when we opposed and when we proposed it. Yeah, I, I'd rather go with what was proposed. Sam here. Um, I have a question on the, the post bond. Is that figure just because you, you were able to find out what the figure was? Yes, we had a submission to the file that better clarified the dollar amount. So I changed it to reflect that. Reading any, anything else on this side? Um, You're good. No. So, we, so we have to change that language. So no new towers may be added. Are we happy? I, I don't think we are. Or at least with, with the majority one? of the board's not happy with 17. Hey. What, what, what number are you on? 17. I mean, I guess we can go with the individual board members. I, I'd rather go with what we proposed originally. No, that's January. what I'm saying. Yeah. Same. Agreed. Concurred, too. So the majority would go with the original. So 17 is no longer applicable. Yep, 17 will go back to the way it was. The way it yeah, was that, okay, that's what I was trying. Yeah, okay. Until it goes back in. Okay. So on 24, this permit shall lapse three years from the date of which the decision is filed. That's just for the tower itself, correct? Well, all our permits are anyways are but I'm um, saying three years. Right, is, so is there a time frame for the carriers to get on and uh, up and running and on board? Did we discuss that? No, but the 24 just has to do with this. Um, any of our permits are only good from right. for three years right. from the So that doesn't, that doesn't encompass that. No. All right. I think three years, yeah. Um, so in other words, we're not limiting the number of carriers on the tower. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, on, on 23, and I know this is, it's not just to this decision, it's to all of them, but we keep doing this thing about changes made prior to approval may be subject to a full hearing, and I think we should start changing them to are not, you know, may be subject, are subject to a full hearing. 
why, why do we keep having May? If we're, well, if we're so permitting a project and changes are made prior to any approval, right. then why would we say, well, it might be, but it's okay? That's when we get into the whole situation. I agree. In general, so I, I think we should just, that should just stay our subject to a full hearing. This cleans it up. I think the language is there for not a project it's for, such as it's this. It's for like a, for a special permit if someone's going to put a slightly smaller or larger window in that doesn't necessarily have to Oh, no, I understand. I, I just think that since all of these, all these decisions we're doing are having this exact same clause in it, that we should be consistent with all of them and just let everyone know that it is subject to a hearing. It's not a, there is no murky water here that it could or it could not be. I think there are circumstances where it doesn't require a full hearing, but I understand your point. I also think it opens it up to a matter of someone else's interpretation of what, what is, you know, three inches on a window and what's two feet on a sidewalk. Yeah. Um, my only other one here, and I know, Noreen, you were going over me with this earlier and questions about wording or whatever, but is, is, is that Osprey clause in here anywhere or what, or reference or? So there is uh, a section where I did briefly touch on the Ospreys, and I guess the question was whether you want something more robust in the language than what was. Was it in the, what, what, what condition is? 20. Something future. 20. Uh, any Osprey that is on that side of the tank, so it's okay. Just it. Oh, I guess that's okay. Yeah, I just wanted something in that. I mean, I mean, I guess you don't have to be as descriptive as these other ones, just so that they're on notice that. It was in the minutes too, where he said that they, they no construction. No, there. as long as it's in here. I mean, she's got it in here. They can't right. disturb the nest period. Right. I just wanted it in here because it's only binding on the. You can, you can condition if you want. You could say that, or there are lessees, and the applicant has to cause any lessees to be aware of that condition. Good point. Oh, I, I I would add that in. You're concerned about the birds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I only bring it up because the one tower I dealt with, they knocked all the birds out of the nest and we had a big issue. So people do not like non-flying ospreys. Are we voting this as a package, Mr. Chairman? We would be. All right, anything else? What did we agree to on 23? <laughs> I think it was an advocate for changing the wording there. On the second page where it says changes made oh. prior to an approval may be subject to a full hearing would be changed to changes made prior to an approval will, um, be. will be or are subject to a hearing, whatever. You have two attorneys, what's the better wording? Right, so you're obviously encouraging people as well that should be, that they would return to you and discuss. Is a hearing. Without, it's, we, it's equal right. benefit to us without, and the without applicant. Without making a change. Yeah. I mean, it takes a gray area. They didn't area. get the administrative approval and they just changed and they didn't get our approval. They, have, they are subject to a hearing. I hope the administrator won't approve. Yeah. And they're subject. All right. Anything else? No, sir. Not for me. Well, would everyone like to make a motion then? So I would make a motion to um, approve the, re the draft as, re as revised in tonight's discussion. Okay, motion was made by Bob. I'll second. second. Second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. All right. Up next, we have the application number 55-20M, RLBE, LLC, Rebecca Ann Lane, Law 2 in East Falmouth. Approval of a landscape plan with a vote anticipated. All right, so we do have a landscape plan. Any discussion, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, you Councilor. So my only question is, so these are these are what eight eight foot Leland Cypress. That says. Appears to be on the west side. Yep. 
red maple from the east. So when they list eight foot Leland Cypress, are they going in at eight feet? Eight foot when planted, yes. Okay. Of course, that's going to be in the spring, Nick, right? So they'll survive. Uh, yeah, it probably won't be until we're yeah. ready to landscape the project. But not in the middle of summer and all of that. So when it comes back, it was too hot to plant and all of that. Well, then it'll probably be more like the fall, then, okay. I would guess. So if we approve the landscape plan, Noreen, there would be uh, notations in the decision that these are eight foot, these are being planted already at eight feet. And then you always put that clause in about the maintenance of the, of the planting so that if they die within so many years, they have to be replaced. Okay. Any other questions from the board? I have a, one question, if I may. I understand the permits were being held up and waiting for this plan. Can we say that the permits can now be released? Well, I think if the board votes the plan. If we vote this plan, then that would actually. Because yep. you, you're the one that signs off anyways, right? Yes. On the, All right. Yeah. All right. So then if, uh, then I'd make a motion to accept the landscape plan as discussed tonight with the um, changes that on the Leland Cypress, the eight foot Leland Cypress, they're already being planted at eight feet. And it, uh, Norman will put in the clause regarding um, maintenance to make sure they're in, in good condition over the next few years or be replaced. Mr. Chairman, I'd oh, second Ms. Dugan's motion. Sorry, just before we do that i just want to make sure we have the right voting numbers noreen is it the numbers on the original project itself or whoever's present tonight yeah i i don't think it's uh, a problem to have whoever you assign just assign somebody who does this all right so it'll be the regular voting numbers and uh sherry all right so the motion was made to approve uh by bob and second by scott all those in favor aye, aye. aye. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mariani. Thank you. Okay, up next we have the board discussion of application 6-19, Locust Field LLC, Beach Plum Path in Hatchville, miscellaneous <coughs> items with a possible vote. Mr. Chairman, um, as usual, when this uh, discussion comes up, I recuse myself on this application and will do so at this moment. Thank you, Scott. All right, Mr. Marioni, um, I think where we left off last time, there was a little bit of a miscommunication with whether your presence was uh, required and whether we could actually engage in conversation with you. Uh, with that comes my apology uh, because we did reach out to town council and he confirmed uh, that such communication between the board and you uh, during an item like this is completely permissible. And I'm sorry if I get a little testy about it. So. It's all right. It was it was pretty late in the evening, wasn't it? I get cranky at a certain time of night. <laughs> are you late? I'm there with you. <laughs> Some of us, it's at 6 p.m. All right. So what do we have on this? So I don't have the file for reference, oh. so maybe the administrator could take sure. us through. Sorry, I thought we... Go ahead, Noreen. Yep, hold on one sec. I had it up, and now I... Okay, so we had a list of items that were outstanding for Locust Field. Um, uh, the first was the landscape plan. The landscape plan submitted and approved by the board um, has not been complied with. Uh, per my notes, there were no arborvitae, for example, installed. Um, and there appeared to be at the time of the inspection homes that did not have plantings on the sides of the houses as demonstrated. So I guess the question is um, getting that landscaping installed to match the plan. Do you want well, me to go through one at a time or do you want the whole list? 
I'd like one at a time. I think that makes yeah. sense. Well, at this, at this point, we're viewing the landscape plan as incomplete. Our work on the landscape plan is incomplete. If we don't complete it as the plan shows, we would understand we would have to come back and ask for a modification to the plan. So I guess the question I would have is it appears as though most of the homes are finished. Um, so I would think that there could be some time frame, time frame that could be referenced and there is a plan on file about when that landscaping is going to get completed. Well, we plan to go back to work out there as soon as the weather breaks, doing that and many of the other things on the list. Is, is there only one home right now that's not occupied? Are they all occupied now? Or Everyone's just, occupied, yes. They're all occupied now, even the, even the last one that... Yes. When, when, was the, when was the last one occupied, do you know? I believe it was January 3rd. Could have been the 5th, but it was right at the beginning of January. That was the last affordable unit. Is there a realistic timetable that when he could either comply or come back to the board and say, we need to change this and this is why? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'd be happy to come back sometime towards the end of April and give you an update. But, you know, when the weather breaks, no, no, we, have, we have several other things we have to do as well, like the concrete bounds and we have some other work that's incomplete out there. So I have a question just for the administrator, and I just don't remember dates, and that's why I was wondering. So the last one was, was occupied approximately January 3rd. Was that prior or after to our notification about all the other issues from engineering that were in violation? The occupancy, you mean? Well, my understanding was last when I was out there after the engineering comments that the, I think it was the last house on the left hadn't been occupied yet. And the whole point was we weren't gonna allow an occupancy permit until some of these other things were rectified had it been occupied and we were just told it wasn't, or did that actually occur? I mean, I, I would just like to know, you may not know tonight, but what the status was, because we were pretty clear that the other issues that came up with engineering, that that should all be corrected prior to. All right, so the occupancy permit was issued through the building department. So they did not circle back with us to make sure that everything was done according to plan prior. So Okay, so, so the building department signed off on the occupancy without checking with you, so that if you hadn't signed off. So we do not typically sign off on occupancy. That being said, the comprehensive permits always say certain items have to be complied with prior to the final occupancy. Was the building department aware of the issues that were sent to us from engineering? So I, not to, well. I know you can't say what the building department right. does. So, I, I'm trying to see so, what the disconnect is yeah, here, and it's, exactly. it's not just, it's any project. Yeah, so I think part of the problem that has taken place most recently in the building department is the lack of a consistent building commissioner. We lately had an interim building commissioner who was here part-time. We now have an interim building commissioner who's also here part-time. So I suspect that there are many items that are not being as carefully watched as they should be. And so in a technical way, that final occupancy should not have been issued until your conditions were satisfied. I know we're gonna go over the items in order, but I just wanna bring this up up front because it's, it's probably the main item. So the T turnaround is a safety issue the way it was constructed. Yep, we have that on the list as well. And I know it's on the yep. list, but that's why I'm bringing it up now. If you have a safety issue with the development, and I understand the building department gave their occupancy, then we have got to figure out how this town is gonna to realize through management or something else that that just isn't allowed. It's a safety feature. On a 40B, safety features are the one main item that they always enforce. But what I, I guess, not to forgive them, but what happens with the building department is when they're asked for issuing an occupancy permit, they're looking at a specific house. They're not looking at the development as a whole. So they essentially miss ensuring that all of your conditions were complied with. So they just never looked at the conditions. 
I can't speak to that. If, 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 our, if, our, if our permits are sent to the building department so they know what, what the approval of the development is, and our permits very specifically, I mean, very easily at the back of the conditions, list one, two, three, four, five, and we have a section that says these have to be complied with prior to construction, these have to be complied with prior to occupancy, it appears they're just not looking at any of our conditions. Excuse me, can I, can I interject something here? May I? We have Sorry. ongoing discussions trying to. It's troubling on the town end. Are we going to discuss I, this on Saturday in general? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a much bigger issue. I no, I know, but to this particular project versus Saturday, Okay, so items were from an engineering department that brought up safety concerns and it is the town's responsibility to make sure they are not issuing permits that are in violation of the conditions. The next one. Can I say something right, about so this landscape please? Plan. Yep. The, the, the key turnaround is built as approved on the plan. I don't know where this perceived safety issue comes from because there are other key turnarounds in town with more than one driveway off them. And but that's not what was approved. It is what was approved. No. Noreen, no. were you telling that was what was approved? The T turnaround was not approved as part of somebody's driveway. It, it was. Okay, Noreen. according to the town engineer, the approved plan showed a T turnaround 80 feet by 22. And he says the constructed turnaround is 86.5, so longer, by 20.9, which is a little bit less wide. Uh, he says the town standards are 80 feet by 18. So according to what the town engineer is saying is that it does meet the town standard, but the concern was that the fire department wants to ensure that they've got a free and clear turnaround area and they're concerned about the amended driveway for 18 feeding into the T turnaround. Which is shown on the final approved plan. I bring it up, Nick, is because when we reviewed the original project and the T turnaround discussions came in, they were presented that the T turnaround was not actually part of a driveway. Because whenever someone tries to propose a T turnaround as part of somebody's driveway, the first question I have is, how can you regulate that nobody parks in the T turnaround? Because there's no signage. It's actually part of their driveway. They needed to access their house. And if there was ever a fire or an issue and a truck showed up and there's a car park there, they can't get to it. So we've had these on other projects too with T turnarounds. We always make sure that they don't share the actual T isn't part of a driveway or an entrance of another property because there really is no way to regulate it. You can put a sign there that says, please don't park here. But, you know, from going into development now versus when it was applied for, and, and I didn't pick it up when it was applied for, um, you can pretty well see that however the uses are doing on the houses now, that they have a parking issue because they just don't have enough room in the driveways for however they're using the houses. It could be gas, it could be whatever. You can see where cars are driving over sidewalks and parking on the, the lawns. Or, you know, there's one house, and again, I didn't notice it. Driver was very short. I had to, I had to pull in there to turn around, and I was practically on the street. So, you know, those are issues we'll look up in, in the future, but that's why we question. It's not that you're saying that it meets a turn standard. It's for us with 40Bs, we have to make sure that we handle all the safety concerns and I wasn't aware that it was going to be part of a driveway, and I read a comment in the file that it might have been the fire department. They're concerned that it's in a driveway. There's no real way to know that. Now, we had documentation in the file as far back as December, and um, with some discussions going back and forth about how could we handle that. Could we change it or do something else with access? And this isn't an issue with you. This is an issue I have with the process. The board was never aware of any of those discussions. We never knew that back in December, they were discussing issues with it. It never came back to us. It might have been within the office. The members didn't know. Is this they, past December you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, so, so, late, so we didn't find out in December when we would have started coming about it in December, and I can tell you right now, if I knew about it in December, 
I would have said send some to the building department and let them know no more occupancies until they fix this because it's a safety concern. You know, I'm not as concerned if you didn't forget to plant a bush or something and you can add that in later on. Um, and this is, could be a disconnect with the, I'm learning more and more, it's a disconnect with the town. For some reason, one department is not checking with the other department and they're, act, and they're acting that they'll just give a permit without knowing if that permit is even valid with the special permit that runs with the land, that runs with the development. Well, I, I hear what you're saying, it makes a lot of sense, but we, we called the, the DPW and the Water Department out for inspections in December because we wanted to make sure we got comments back from them before they closed the asphalt plants and before it snowed and we couldn't, they couldn't see the, uh, Substrate. the, the dry wells and things like that. So they came out and they did an inspection of that the best they could at that time. A couple of little things come up. I believe we've addressed those issues. We weren't looking for a final inspection. And I'm not saying that you didn't notify them, but then we get a comment, a plan from engineering, again, not knowing your discussion with engineering or anything else, and engineering states with us very clear, we have no idea what the substrate is because they did it and we didn't inspect it. So we only see the comments coming later on. We don't get to know that you called engineering in December or January and you thought it was okay, and then you have to come back here because their comment comes from engineering that says, we can't even tell you what the substrate is under the asphalt because we weren't there when it was closed in. Or, or the comment about the, 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 the water that had to be fixed, whatever the water line was that had to be fixed. There was um, a leak, yeah. Again, we didn't know about that when it originally happened. The members itself weren't, weren't informed. And then we get the comments later on that say, oh, and the street was dug up because of a water break and the town is saying we're not responsible because it's a private road, and this has now created another safety issue. Well, we're not trying to get away from any of those things. What happened with that thing, I think that comment that you're reading, is not that they didn't see what was under the asphalt. When they came out, they measured the T turnaround, and we had a, a radius issue where there wasn't enough pavement. Do, do it, know, so I, there, I don't there, have the file, right. but do so you have the there, comment? There were two separate things. So. Engineering also pointed out that there was a water main repair that was done and that they were not called to inspect the road repair. So what they we were saying is- We haven't repaired the road. Pardon? We haven't repaired it right, the road yet. We, we, it was a repair that was done after the plants closed. We just did a temporary patch oh, around it. It's still right. not paved. Okay. okay. So, all right, so that, that we, all right, so and, I and guess- But, but, the, the but issue, that's just not the comment that they're sending us. That's, right, that's the, the problem I have. The issue the comment right. related to some radiuses they measured, engineering measured on the T turnaround. The radiuses weren't wide enough. The plants were closing the next day, yeah. so we went out and made the repair. They did not see the substrate well, under it. Patches, if, if it's a big deal, we'll take it up so they can see it. Right. But it, it, we just wanted to get it done before the plants closed. Understood. Maureen, what else do we have? I'm just trying to move okay, it along. Okay, um, bounds that need to be installed. Yeah. Um, Final certification by a uh, surveyor. I guess they were stating that. He's was, working on the as built now. Yeah. Um, following, and then they had the comment about following the water main repair that they needed to be called out to inspect the road with the intent that the town <coughs> could one day take the road. Um, they had a concern about a sidewalk being insufficient in size or width. That's correct. It shows four foot six on the plan. Yeah. The contractor that did the sidewalk apparently didn't see the four foot six, put it down as four foot, put it installed at a four foot, couple places a little wider, couple places a little narrower. We intend to make them fix it if we can't get permission to leave it at four feet because it, it, he was supposed to build it according to the plan. Um, they, I guess there were some walkways that were less than uh, four foot required by the CMR. So that would need to be added on the list as well. Um, All of that would be corrected. And then I'm assuming the bus shelter is completed now? It's not painted, but it's, it's sidewalled. And then the resolution of the temporary construction access from Gifford. That was the last item. 
that when we do the landscaping, we'll restore that area. Wasn't there something with the, um, I was trying to pull up my email, on um, the shelter in front? Uh, yeah, he was just saying it's not completed. Okay. They're uh, still waiting, I guess, to paint it. So how many, I, I just. So I have a list of 10 items. Yeah, I just, I, unfortunately, I don't have the file and I don't have a copy okay. of the 10 items. I'm just trying to go over memory, but. Is it apparent we're not going to have a vote tonight? Yeah, well, no. Maybe we should continue it. Well, the, I think the purpose is to have a discussion tonight and get input from the applicant's representative okay. with how much time is in t how much time may be necessary to address these items. Okay, that's fair. Mr. Marioni, what I'm hearing from you tonight is a lot of this has to do with the asphalt plants. Obviously, it's the middle of winter. In order to address and, f and fix these items, like the sidewalks, things of that nature, the landscaping, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. All right, I'll speak up because I know the, the air is running. <laughs> what, what I'm hearing from you tonight is that a lot of these items, uh, like the landscaping, you need good weather for that. With regard to things like the sidewalks, the walkways, uh, I, assu I assume you need the asphalt plants to be open in, in order to widen and, and fix them. Right. Um, so like you said with the landscaping, you're, you, you need the good weather. I would say everything on that list is we, we deem as incomplete where it's either going to be repaired according to the plans or we will appear back before you asking for modifications, one or the other. The intent right now is to get out there and finish the job and get off the site and have you happy with us. Six months? No, so it, won't be, it won't be this month, obviously. No, six, six months. Six. <laughs> uh, well, as soon as the weather breaks, we're going to get on it. So maybe uh, end of end of March, first of April. As soon as the frost is out of the ground, we're going to start the bounds. We already have them. If, if I was looking at this at priority of the items that, again, I don't have in front of me, but were listed, I think that turnaround as a driveway is priority number one. Right now, whether you like it or not, signage has to be put out there that says cannot block. I have another proposed solution for it. We have that temporary construction easement out to the town land on Gifford Street. Sorry, Mr. Romarioni, my, my apologies. Can you speak up as well, please? I'm sorry. No, it's, it's all right. It's yeah. just the, the air we, blowing. We have, uh, we have a, a temporary easement through the town's land onto Gifford Street. That's sort of constructed. We, we were going to propose to move. Where it goes right now, it goes by that uh, eight, number 18's driveway. We could easily move it over to the right so that it almost comes off the end of the road. Keep that access out to Gifford Street and put a landscape such that they could get through it in an emergency and put a gate there that the town has a key to, a, a knockdown gate or it's something. A, it's, it's, it's a good idea, an idea for it. My personal opinion is if it's a change like that that's going to happen, I think we should have an actual hearing on it. That's, that's more than, no, I look at that as more of, I don't look at that as a minimal change. When, when these hearings were done and everybody came out and you know gives all their opinions, everything's figured out, that was an issue. They even had an issue with act, you know, keeping that access open towards the school. There was an issue about safety with the turnaround. And I understand what you're saying. It was put in there. Someone made a mistake. Um, Right now, that's a priority. You can't guarantee right now that you're going to have access out the other end. And right now, if, if it's, they're all occupied, somebody right now could, be, could park and block off the area. And we've known this from, what, when were the engineering comments? What date did those come into us? I don't have them marked on this page. Let's say it was a month ago. So for a month, we've known it's a safety hazard. And no one has even thought about placing a sign that says don't use. Now my guess is, Mr. Maroney, that if a sign shows up that says don't use, don't park, whoever bought that house and is occupying it is immediately going to have an issue because my guess is they probably think they can use that how they want. Why? Why do you think that? Because when you drive there, it is their driveway to their house. It doesn't look like a separate area that's been separated off. 
there's no lineage. It literally looks like a driveway. And looking at all the other houses where people are trying to park in the driveways or on a lawn, my guess is if you have extra guests, they're just going to park there. It doesn't say to them it's a problem if you park here. It's an unknown because they're not aware. That's a, a big concern for me. I know you can't do the corrections on the sidewalks now. You got weather permitting and stuff to eat with, but we've heard this on this project and a numerous other projects. These projects keep going in and we keep getting the same comments on the sidewalks. They're either removed, changed, or they don't meet what the guidelines are. That should be corrected to meet whatever the original guidelines were. Um, we shouldn't have to go between months from a comments on engineering, again, that we weren't aware of. And then now we're looking at another six months down the road. Give us a solution. We, we built it the way it's shown on the plan. So how, what do you want us to do? Well, what, but you keep saying we built it the way you showed on the plan. We were never told that that was going to be the driveway to the house. The plan showed that. The revised plan showed that. So I think the problem, or I, I know what the like, problem yeah. is. They mix, they move the septic system, and they change the plan. And the right. board members were never made aware of the plan. Not your fault. We weren't made aware. I never knew. I assumed it made, it made sense. They were going to switch the septic system, keep it out of the critical zone for the water. They just changed it that way and said, okay, now this is a driveway. Right. We didn't know that. We based our decision on that plan that it wasn't set up that way. And we shouldn't have to go back and forth on a project for six to nine months when we know there's a safety hazard and the town is just as liable, Mr. Look, I think they're just as liable. I think the building department gave an occupancy permit over our permit, which is the one that's regulatory. I think they're just as liable. The building department and the town should look working with the developer, how can we fix this? What because is, it shouldn't go out. I know, I know what you're saying, but we, what do we want him to do or not do? He either puts a sign yeah. up? Or well, right now there should be some kind of signage or something that says to people, you cannot park or block this area. They're approving period. a sign. We can put up a no parking sign there. That should just be done just for liability reasons. On any changes on that end of the, of the cul-de-sac or however they're going to even propose changes, I think that has to come back to a meeting. I don't feel comfortable when you had so many people in the neighborhood look at a development that has been very contentious. We know there's been you know, appeals and back and forths on all sides. I don't feel, I don't feel comfortable saying, well, I'm just going to okay the change. Um, you don't get any input on it. And you came to all the meetings and assumed that we weren't going to do this. I, I just don't, I don't think it's right. I think it's- Bob, it, excuse me, what are we going to do to, I mean, you've said it and I think we all agree. It's, he's going to put a sign up, he's going to come in with a modification or not, but what are the next steps to correct? But that's what I'm saying. So we can suggest he put a sign up. That doesn't mean that putting the sign up fixes the problem. Well, like what's going to fix should, the problem? They're going to have to come back here and they're going to have to give us a plan and they're going to show us, they're going to okay, have to well show us what, what they we do. want. Uh, but that's for an actual meeting. Well, that's okay, but he's going to come back with a modification. We built it the way it was shown. Why do we want to modify it? Well, well you could present that in the meeting. I mean, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, Bob usually has a pretty good memory. I mean, and honestly, Nick, you, even tonight, I, w we should all right now have the all the comments in front of us and, and go by it. I don't. Uh, that's what I'm saying. So we're going to need a. You know, as far as the landscaping stuff, the landscaping stuff to be changed, you know, Noreen caught with the changes. They have to do that when that's better weather, and then it can be check, physically checked and signed off on. The sidewalk is a standard. Um, you, can, you can apply to see if we can do a modification if you want. I personally will tell you in advance, I will not vote for a modification on that. And we'll fix on the it. sidewalk. And we'll I would we'll want it, it corrected. The issue that the, uh, the engineering brought up, is, is, is the roadway still dug up where that water lane was? Around the pipes, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. is there any kind of a temporary uh, Yeah, there's gravel patch around it. May, there might even be some coal patch, but it's not certainly not the permanent patch on it. So we reschedule. And then, something? quite honestly, for the chair, I don't know what the choices are. I mean, we've given them ideas of what they can do, but this is again an open meeting discussion. Um, how do we get it on a a hearing agenda? Do we have to 
It's a possible vote, Barbara, so we can say we're recommending So it. you can, if you okay. wanted to have this on again in the future, you could have it added as an open meeting agenda. Um, when you have a noticed meeting, you know, that's usually specifically attra attached to permitting. Now, this project has already been permitted, so there, the... So it's it's so I, so notice, I just did, so it's been permitted. The meeting, there, there's not a permit that you're giving that you would base the notice on. It's in violation of the comprehensive permit. So we need a modification. I, I mean, it, it is in violation of the comprehensive permit. I don't know how you could say that it's not in violation of that. Per, that's a permit. It may not be the building permit, right. but it's the comp permit. And as far as the 40 Bs go, we actually stand in for building in all the other town departments. So I think that has standing. I think they're in violation of the comprehensive permit for the reasonings that the engineer gave when they reviewed the project. And we've discussed stuff tonight regarding, you know, landscaping, some of the other things. But as far as that end structure, I think it would be in the board's best interest to actually open a hearing based on the fact that the comprehensive permit has been violated. How so? How's it been violated? Please explain that to me. Because the, the items we listed in the comprehensive permit didn't appear as they list in the comprehensive permit. Specifically, the sidewalks and... Take, take that just as one example, the sidewalks. So we, that we doesn't meet what we voted on. We're not complete with that. We're not asking you to change anything yet. We're, not, we're just saying we're incomplete. We're going to fix it. What I'm saying is, I know you're going to fix it, which is fine. Uh, the administrator said, how can you ask for an open meeting if the, all the permits are given? I'm making the argument that our permit is the comprehensive permit. And in in what's happened so far does have violations based on our permit. You have said you would like to try to correct stuff, but either way, they currently are in violation of our permit. But who issues that violation notice? We don't have to do a violation notice. We've, well, we've, we've, you said, wait a minute. We're back, you know. You're saying we're in, he's in violation or the project's in violation. It may, very well may be. Who makes that determination? So engineering sent us comments. No, no, no. on this board. Do we make it? No, no. Or does the ZBS? Well, you're asking. I'm trying to say. Engineering sent us comments because we're the comprehensive permit authority that gave the original permit. They're notifying us about issues that weren't in compliance with our permit. We are the only authority for the comprehensive permit. The ZBA is the one that decides if you're in so violation. So we have to have a public hearing on a potential recall or changing. I'm just trying to get to the we point. So that's we what I was trying to say. We can we, can we ask that we want to have an open hearing based on a the information we were given that what's on site currently that can or may be corrected is in violation of our, just like that clause you put in, may come yeah, back, I guess, may open right, a hearing. But I guess the question is, I'm not clear how reopening a hearing and notice how that is going to play into this. Because you're trying to negotiate outside of the public venue a solution to something that was a safety concern. And I think the public has the right to weigh in on safety concerns. So that issue only, you're saying? Because the rest of it we're looking at as a punch list. I just think completed. safety concerns are something, I've been to enough of the courses, that are an issue with comprehensive permits, and we have teeth with them. But Bob, he's agreeing. I think we're trying to move on to the bunch of punch list items, and the T turnaround is, is, it might be the board, but right now it's your biggest concern for safety. So it's how do we address the T well, turnaround? We, cur we currently don't have a request for any kind of a modification. We just have on the agenda that we're going to have a discussion. So we have no formal modification request. Sorry, Bob. Just Point of order, Mr. We're not asking it's to modify anything. So yeah. I'll make the motion to go to 1045. Oh, I'll second. Su suggest 11. We've got <laughs> yeah, six <laughs> items left on open meeting, and people need to tighten up their comments. We, we can talk fast. So if you don't know. All right, no, so I'll the make the motion to go to 11. James, you want to second, second that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 OK. So if, if the administration isn't, isn't um, positive what the procedure would be for us to ask to open a hearing, then maybe you consult with the town council and ask them what our procedure would be. Because comments have been, say, individual board members, whatever, is that we have issues that, were, that are considered on the comprehensive permit, safety concerns. 
and we would like to have a public hearing to discuss safety concerns. And, and just to briefly follow up on your comments, Bob, I considered all of those things safety issues with the exception of the landscaping, landscaping and, 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 is, the, yeah. and installing the bounds. Sidewalks, the... Uh, so which ones are you saying are safety issues? I didn't hear the chairman. So the, the sidewalks, the walkways, the temporary access to Gifford. Everything about it, the landscape, yeah, everything the, except the landscaping. The turnaround, the, everything except for the landscaping. The concrete the bounds. Concrete and the concrete bounds, obviously. We still look at all those things as incomplete items that we just haven't finished yet that we intend to. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with you on the safety issue with the T turnaround. You got one on Rebecca Ann that's got five driveways off it. I don't know if anybody has been killed with it yet. And we have a better situation because we have the access road. So maybe something you'd like to discuss a modification to. Um, I just don't want to, you know, we, we've been back hashing these over and over again, and there's no need to keep hashing them over and over again. As Let's far as I'm concerned, our legal position is no, no, I think you have to find out what the legal position is. So we can move on. That's all I'm saying. It just, I'm very frustrated with the process with the town. Well, I, I, do we blame the building department when their purview is building compliance? I, I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated with the, I'm frustrated with the town. I'm frustrated with the town that it's very simple. It's a one, it's a one page checklist for one person in one department to say we're giving out a permit, click, 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 they met everything, there's no problem. Mr. Chair, could we, we I mean, I, I think we all agree with Bob, but we've said it, we've reset it, and we've reset it. You know, let's move on on this thing and solve the, the town process problem at another time. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we'll get there, but I think, I, Bob, would, like you said, you, we, I I'm, guess I'm, we need to reach out to Town if if, if the administration the says she doesn't know how we would open them, we'd have to reach out to town council and ask how we open the hearing. Okay. And then, and then just as a suggestion to the applicant, because we can't formally require you to do anything because it's you have national modification, I would suggest that some kind of signage or something be put in that area just so that no one leaves a car there and there's a access issue. Just, just one other clarification. I know everybody's getting tired. One other clarification. If we got to a point where that last permit wasn't issued and we're holding up someone from moving into their house because we can't do work because of the weather. We need to have some sort of a, a mechanism to allow the people to get a certificate of occupancy and move in. I don't know if that's a uh, bond, you know, whatever you know, it is. There would be we a need bond to posted if there was outstanding yeah. work. And I think but the we don't problem have that I agree with that. We, that. we can't keep people out of their houses because we got issues to be finished. Yeah, and that's what we would normally have a bond. But so, again, here we have nothing. We have well, no we need to work these things out. So uh, we're willing to listen to that. And and. I'll get that sign up and what we're coming back. You're going to notify me when we're coming back. Or? Appreciate it, Mr. Maroney. Um, There's no real vote. We just asked yeah. you to check the town, check with town council. For, for the time being, Mr. Maroney, I, I think we're going to check in with town council and just see how to properly proceed from here. And right, you'll notify me what we'll, you're going to do. Yep, right. we'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you for your time Set. tonight. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. There's no public. Oh comment. no, no, she's requesting oh, that they hear it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the items. So I will make a motion to take yeah. open meeting item number six out of order. And I'll second it. <laughs> Whatever right. it is. Well, 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 Should have told us at the beginning of the meetings, and then we could have adjusted all, all it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> we didn't want to interrupt. That was that was pretty. All right, so taking item number six out of order, request for an insubstantial change regarding application 35-7PF Falmouth LLC, Forest Cove, 637 Gifford Street in Falmouth with a vote anticipated. What do we have on this? Is it all right, so it says here, attachment number one, it says condition number 22 of the comprehensive permit of the Zoning Board of Appeals in paragraph 5.27 of the association deed 
of approval granted November 16, 2007 reads, the applicant shall submit $10,000 to the condominium trust for the purpose of establishing recreational amenities within the development. The site plan with the revision date of July 27, 2007 shows two play areas within the development. One play area is located behind building number three and four and one between buildings 11, 15, and 16. Uh, this shall be addressed in the economy and documents to be approved by the board and the board's legal counsel. Uh, further, paragraph 5.27 of the Associated Deed refers to the same condition of the plan. Pursuant to section 5.27 of the Declaration of Trust, in accordance with the comprehensive permit, paragraph 22, prior to the sale of the last unit, the declarant shall submit 10000 to the condominium trust for the purpose of establishing recreational amenities at the recreation areas of the condominium as shown on said site plan. Detach of the site plan. So Noreen, what is the change? So what they're requesting, and she can speak to it for you, is that there was money put aside and they would like to have that money returned to them. Do you want to discuss each one as we go over them? Because I know there's a couple. So do you want to discuss the first one? The there are two separate uh, funds that we're discussing, correct. The first fund, um, which is the recreate, it's stipulated as recreation yeah. funds. So, I'm, I'm sorry, oh. can, you, can you introduce I'm taking this off. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. thank you. It's the only you. way to speak. Um, my name is Ellen Mark. I am a resident of Forest Cove condominiums, as well as the chair of the Board of Trustees. I've been living there for four years now, and I've brought two other members of the board as well who were occupants of Forest Cove. Um, so to the funds, um, the first, the request for the $10,000 um, is really a request for removal of a simple term the, that uh, the funds are already in our Forest Cove uh, General Reserve Fund. Um, they are, as stipulated by the comprehensive permit of the board, uh, of the zoning board, um, they are stipulated as recreation funds. Um, and so that, as such, they've been untouched in our, in our funds. We're requesting to remove that, basically the term recreation funds, um, so that we can simply use those funds as, um, as needed for repairs uh, that are, aren't, recreation, aren't recreation facilities. Um, the reason that uh, they were originally set for as recreation funds, I believe, by the zoning board that uh, was uh, because um, uh, as we continue, as the phases continued to grow and we and be occupied and sold, um, it became. Let me just say that it became clear that there was not a need for recreation facilities at Forest Cove. We're 36 units. Um, we have um, one quarter of them. Nine units are 40B occupants. Um, our our facility and our grounds are. Uh, right next door to the Trotting Park um, Park, as well as 0.8 miles from Goodwill Park, which I'm sure you're all familiar, has quite a wonderful recreational facilities, including the playground, the ponds, uh, walking paths, biking paths, etc. So the need for recreational facilities, per se, at Forest Cove, are uh, we could really use the funds elsewhere right now. Um, we would like to add a few recreational items that we can handle within our normal budget. Um, perhaps a, um, oh, and, and let me also state that the two recreational areas that are stipulated on the plots, and you have, I think you have the plan. I, I, I have the one, I don't think anyone else says I have the one plan. Um, well, do you have were the? Those, so are those two play areas, are they in existence? They are open areas right now. And they are, will remain so, certainly the one that's the larger one because our, um, we have a uh, community septic system, septic plant, and the distribution fields run directly under that, the, play the larger play area. So as such, we really are, would be very uncomfortable and it would not be proper to add any 
play equipment or anything heavy on over that, the distribution fields. Um, the area, it's an open field almost the size of a football field, I believe. And we already have, the residents already use that facility for walking their dogs. The kids play soccer, practice soccer in there. It's all very passive recreation area already. So we're, we're, it's, it's used as recreation. Um, so in your, in, your, in your condominium fees, however you have them set up, is mm -hmm. there a certain portion of your fund that will still be available for maintenance of those areas? Um, absolutely, our, our, um, we in, included in our um, funds, in our budget, we have um, landscaping as one of our biggest fixed <laughs> budget items. Um, but do any of them specifically, uh, is there money specifically set aside for these two specific areas? And the reason I ask is because the $10,000 that was set aside for recreational specifically denotes these two areas. Right. And I wasn't on the original decision, but usually when that happens, it's because they want to make sure that those two areas are continually are, are maintained as the space that they were required for. So if you got the $10,000 back, are there any funds in your homeowner's plan which will still, that are set specifically to maintain those two areas? Well, those two areas are passive recreation areas, and our regular budget certainly maintains those areas, uh, and not for. So you haven't used the ten thousand all for no. maintenance of those areas. It's, it, no, it's still in our reserve in our reserve funds, now, untouched. Is that, is that an interest bearing account that fund? So is there more than ten thousand than was originally? Well, it depends allowed? on how they want to set up, but that really doesn't matter. That that if the ten thousand was there and it was set aside for recreational, and they specifically named maintain these two areas, that they would be using those monies over the years versus pulling funds out from your other fund to maintain those two areas. Well, maintain meaning they're they're open green Landscaping. grass areas. You know, so what? mowing um, that kind of stuff. They're part of our re regular budget anyway. We, so that was we my don't question. not mow those no, areas. No, no, so, that was my, so that was my question. Um, why are you using your regular budget monies for maintenance of those areas when you already set aside $10,000 to handle the maintenance? It's landscaping. Yeah, I mean, it's. Can, can I ask, is there, is, has there been a vote of the unit owners asking to release this money, or is it just coming from the trustees at this point? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the end of your question. <laughs> Uh, has there been a, a vote of the unit owners, uh, the trustees, to release these funds? The, there hasn't been a vote of the, tr the trustees are coming to you because th the trustees would like to use those funds for to keep them in our reserve funds and remove that, that, that label of recreation. Um, we don't need a, board, a, um, a vote of the, all the unit owners. We need you to approve it. We need the zoning board to approve it. And you represent the association. We are the, the um, trustees of the association, correct. So it's being maintained already under another budget. The landscape, and if it's passive, yeah, then, I'm just, then they're I, just I mowing was, the grass was, and they're playing I, on the grass. I was just confused. The, right. the money, the 10000 was set aside specifically for these two areas in the complex. It donates them on the map and the plan. Like My yeah. question simply was, if you had that money for those two areas, why are you using money from another part of a fund? Because they didn't need to draw it out. And I'm guessing that the money was to put in a pickleball court. Well, it's not specific. The previous four decisions for a right. jungle gym for the kids. A you know, playground, it's, it's just right. not specific. Right. So it's typically for equipment. Right. right. Not maintenance. Yeah. Maintenance yeah. Is, should be. Hi, I'm Karen Sinowitz. I'm also um, a resident of the condo. But um, I also need to tell you that we're, we're a brand new board of trustees, newly independent from our developer who owned us. So and we had no control of what happened prior. So it was, we, it's been a year, right? Almost we're two years. We're in our second year as independent, as independent. from the uh, developer. We're adjusting. Yeah, you, you, you've right. taken it over. Just, just. Right. And this, this recreation fund was imposed in 2007 and agreed to by the developer. 
I'm satisfied, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm, 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 satisfied. Satisfied. I'm, I'm satisfied, satisfied also. The second well, one. Yeah, I'm fine with the first one. Right. He certainly doesn't what look reckless it? to me. Oh, no, I'm just. 5600? I feel better than being taken over the association. That's the second one. Do we vote on the 10,000 first? Yeah, so let's vote in the first one, which is to change that condition 22. Remove the word. It removes the 10,000. No, we move the word. Recreation. Remove the term, because we are we already have the funds. They're already in our account. So just remove the term, recreation. That was my question. The funds were supposed to be, I, I, you know, let me get more the to this. The is entity no is in existence for what that money is No, the entity is in existence. Distribute it. The entity is in existence, but you want to just remove the wording. Well, actually, the, the entire uh, condition 22. You want to get rid of the whole condition, because if you don't, then you're saying that we're telling you to take the money and put it into something else, and we don't want to do that. Right, correct. So, so we'll just vote to remove um, yes. condition correct. 22. Correct. Right, that's so what we're asking. That's, so that's the first vote. Yes, let's right, vote that one. Condition motion to 22. remove condition 22. All right, so motion was made by Bob. Second. Second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Second Great. one's more Thank complicated. Thank you very much. So let me read it first, and then you can. Okay. So condition 29 reads, a common denitrification system shall be required subject to approval by the Board of Health and Falmouth Wastewater Superintendent. Said septic system shall have certification from the Mass Department of Environmental Protection, Mass DEP, for general use for nitrogen reduction and is listed in the most current Mass DEP list of innovative and alternative subsurface sewage disposal technologies approved for use in Massachusetts. This system shall be consistent with the applicant's proposal dated August 30th, 2007, provided by the Woods Hole Group to achieve nitrogen con concentrations of 12 milligrams to one or less in a yearly average basis. Monitoring of this system shall be consistent with the Board of Health Agents Memorandum dated August 15, 2007 or other requirements as necessary by the Board of Health. The applicant shall set aside a dollar amount equal to the present day cost of labor and materials as determined by the written proposals from the manufacturer and local licensed septic installer to fund additional tertiary treatment components in the event that the septic system fails to meet the above standard. The fund shall be held in an interest-bearing escrow account or certificate of deposit as suitable term by attorney Jeffrey W. Oppenheim. The fund shall not be released without specific written authority of the Zoning Board of Appeals upon administrative review. The fund shall be submitted into said escrow account prior to completion of phase two of the development. So what are you c requesting on this one? Phase so just for some background on that, those uh, it is the amount of $5,262 is in an es escrow account at Citizens Bank. Interest bearing, correct? I believe. Mm. I, we have no control over it. It is currently. No, I'm only asking because it says it has to be an interest bearing account. It, yeah, I don't see on their report that, that it got interest, but. It's in an, a Citizens Bank um, account. It's being held by um, our former developer's um, attorney. The Jeffrey Oppenheim that's in here? No. I believe Jeffrey Oppen Oppenheim was the town's counsel at the time this fund no. was required. No, he's a private attorney, and this is very specific that he would hold it, so he would hold it. Well, forever. and I, you know, this was 2017 before any of us were present, so we don't know what transpired there, but do you? Oh. Well, it, whatever. Fill us in. <laughs> what would you like us to do with the money? It, it is currently, the, before you explain, let me just finish with the whole picture, which is that it's currently being held by um, Brodigan and Radner. And Radner, thank Radner. you. Gardner, um, they do provide uh, reports to our, uh, we have um, a property management company, Distinctive Property Services. We get, um, I believe, annual report from them that the, that the funds are still there in escrow. So it should have been to Oppenheim and, and um, Donna Brennan here can probably explain how it ended up in, okay. in their hands, but we're here to ask that those funds now be released back to the trust, to the trustees of the organization. Huh? 
I think that's all we have to vote on, to release the funds. Yeah, but, uh, could you read again why it's there? Well, that's what I mean. Did they meet if the terms? If you needed upgrade, it, the, way I, the way I heard that is if you need any upgrades, and I know that there's annual testing and all of that that comes out of a fund. Then the money's available. And I know a little bit about this, trust me. Having, having that in a fund in the event something goes wrong with a denitrifying system where you have to upgrade it, you'd be glad you had it collecting whatever pennies of interest that was in there if you had to do it because it is very, very expensive. So, $9, so I, I just, I, I know the way I heard you read that it's, is it's as very a protection specific. to you, it's not a, as an escrow in the event that it, do, it fails to work for a short time. The, those systems have to be maintained in perpetuity. And I think that's what the, how that reads. Protection. That's there to protect you from, in case something goes wrong or something significantly changes like a pump or an air uh, an air dryer or all of that well let me say how i interpret this um the funds were requested to be set aside by the zoning board um, um in case a pump needed to be added to the system that's and there was a uh an estimate for that pump in the amount of five thousand two hundred and sixty two dollars um, in 07? In uh, 17, 2017. Probably twice that. And now. that's included oh, yeah. in, our, in my report to you, in our report to you. Um, correct, it may go up. That's correct. But we, uh, Forest Cove has maintained and, and actually fired <laughs> the original septic um, oversight company and how, has now hired Coastal Engineering to maintain and make sure that our denitrification, if I get it right, is, um, is to code and correct. They um, add nutrients and, and the right chemicals on, an, on a regular basis. They report to the Board of Health, they analyze, and we have in our budget a $6,000 um, budget for just for Coastal Engineering to maintain the system that's I think the an intent with budget. that and the way it was written is that in the event that something went wrong like that pump that would shut down your whole system that money is there as a fail safe correct what if you didn't have money in your budget or something else happened but nobody could afford to have your septic systems go down that's why that money's there for protection, if I'm not mistaken. It reads that's, just that's like how, that that's to me. In the that's why we, we I understand, and that at the time that the requiring the builder to do this, uh, the developer to, to put these funds aside through fa the final phases. However, we also, what are our, our reserve funds for, if not for the future event that we and we have built up our reserve funds to an, a significant amount. That was going to be my question, Madam right. President. I'm, I'm a Correct. condo trustee myself. I represent condominiums as an attorney. Are you sufficiently capitalized in your reserve account so that if this money is transferred, you'd be able to write a check if the system failed tomorrow? What I can tell you is that our current balance is 64000 and change. I don't know the exact so, figure. Uh, how many units are in the complex? 36. Um, just because I do a condos too. So, so, the, so the issue is, and you do have at least a reserve fund. We absolutely. 36 units. Mm -hmm. If you have issues with sidings, roofs, and everything else that you're not specially assessing for to pull out of your reserve fund, that 64,000 is not going to go very far. That's just Bear in mind, we are a two, uh, going on four year old, uh, two years since we were completely finished. Um, we are building our reserve fund on a, on a compliant basis every year. We do um, put funds towards into our reserve fund every year, um, and we have built it up to the 64,000, and we will continue to. We are assuming that because we're a new, newer uh, condominium association, that yes, we are planning that in 10 and 15 years from now, yes, that's what those funds are for is to, as roofs go, windows go, whatever is going to be required for major repairs, maybe it'll be septic. We don't know. Is why the ability to use this money for something other than septic. We, we'd like to have that money in our general fund so that, yes, it could be applied to anything that we need. 
the general future. fund or reserve fund? Re I'm sorry, I keep calling it general. It's reserve fund. Okay. Yes. Your new association. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we have more discussion. My, my only issue with it is that this is specifically with septics that could shut down the complex. Thank you. And I understand they're building up a reserve fund, but I don't see any harm in keeping this amount of money in there in case a pump or something goes down. The money's there, they can still use it, but they have to use it for the septic. Well, I'm not sure that amount of money, if something goes wrong, and you, got, you, you know, that's a small amount of money in case of. No, I'm just saying it's listen, there I'm, towards I'm it. I'm tell you, it's a little yeah. amount of money. Yeah, yeah, that's so I'm just saying, I think Bob's. And I wasn't on right. that case, forgive me, but oh, is that tiny. a wastewater treatment plant that they put in, or is it individual? No, I know, I know but. Oh, it's sure. probably, yeah. But is it, but is it, does, is it a one septic system that serves multi-units? Because when I, when they were building uh, that. There were some big components there. Let me explain. We have a very large, uh, all for, uh, one very large system for the entire community, but there's 18 buildings of two units in each building. They have separate And systems. each building has its own separate system. So my tank guess is well. this was for the large shared system. Yes, correct. So there's 36. If each has a, their own tank, the tank encompasses the D night unit, not, not the. The, the SAS. Yeah, so I wasn't even on this, so for some reason I keep thinking that when the development was done, because they kept building, that they put, like you said, one shared system for a lot of units, and then when they built the remaining units, every two units they built had their own system. Um, well, they all do. All 18 buildings have their own one, one uh, $1,500 $1, gallon tank. Could we all go back to 18 if they buildings. Really yeah, it let them as trustees manage the money as they see fit. I mean, if the septic tank goes down, a number of things would go down. It shut down the, uh, uh, the, the the community. That would be up to the Board of Health to issue an enforcement order and for you guys to comply in a timely manner. Absolutely. So I, I personally think the 5,600 is, is it 5,600? 52. Let, let them use it as they see fit. It's up to the Board of Health. I, I see it as us re uh, removing a safety feature of exactly oh, what you yeah, just explained. I, I kind of see the same thing, and, and I, don't, I don't see how it hurts being in there, because if they do have a septic issue, whether they have a reserve fund or not, they can use this money first, and they still have reserve monies that they would add to it. Okay. You know, did, just putting this in a general that, fund. I don't know what you're did, also on another reserve Did you hear what he just said? Well, that's said. what I mean. I mean, right now, if you got 64000 in reserve yeah. fund anyways, you, could take you don't that need this money for something else. They've already got a reserve fund there. Before. Use it for septic tank purposes. We could use the, I'm sorry, which, the, you could I'm take sorry. Take the 5200 and use it for your ongoing. Do you have, can I ask you a question? Where, you have monitoring and testing yearly there, right? More than yearly. Okay, absolutely. so where does that, who pay, what part of, what funds pay for that? Our annual budget. Okay, and that's how it was drawn up in the, in the documents. Okay. All right. So they could use that money for that purposes, right? The annual monitoring is a form of yeah. maintenance. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So well, that's what I'm saying. It's just, it's for specific, for septic. You, could, have just, to use you septic. could just draw it down another way if we don't approve it. I'd like to approve it, but I don't think there's enough. We don't have on. access to those funds, though. They're currently, you, we're Unless asking there's you, an issue. We're asking you to release those funds to Forest Cove. To I'm the make we, a motion to authorize the release of the funds to the authorize, reserve account. Yes, good point. May I say something? Last year we spent 7700 plus 2020. We spent nine thousand, oh, almost ten thousand dollars on the septic last year from our operating fund. I can believe. It. So that fifty-six is fifty-two hundred has already been used. Well, yeah, you just you should. You know. well, well, I, I think, think we got a motion. On uh, hold on, hold on. That kind of changes. There, there was a motion. Well, right. oh yeah, go ahead. Eleven, well, first oh, of all, okay. there's a motion to James. You made the motion to. Sorry, just repeat it. Authorize the release of the restricted funds to the condominium's reserve account. All right, I'll second that. Well, I, can I ask one question? Yeah. Um, so the original funds were held by Jeffrey Oppenheim. Somehow the new funds are held no, by Broadway. They were never in his. Well, according to the permit, they were held by Jeffrey Oppenheim. Now that they're held by a company called Broadigan and Gardner, um, where do we have the purview to say Broadigan and Gardner has to release their monies to a 
to the condominium association. We don't. We don't have that power. Um, there's a letter attached as well from um, Brodigan and Gardner that I indicates that, that, that when the. No, and I, I, I understand. I'm just saying that the, the Brodigan letter doesn't say. I understand that. My client's permit is required to state the correct escrow of the authority of the request to me. I'm just going to estimate all the Brodigan. The, third, the second paragraph in, of the letter from uh, Brodigan to Sari, Sari Boudreau, zoning administrator. Yeah, and it says, I, I enclose a copy of the estimate for said costs for all Cape Environmental Services. As the attorney for the developer, I am required to hold the estimate amount of 5262 in an escrow account, which can only be released it says it can only be released with Falmouth Zoning Board of Appeal approval, and I don't see in here where it says that we have the power to release it. But so it only can be. It didn't He's saying we can only release it in this. Oh, I see. Our his opinion. So is it a majority vote? It's, a, it's, 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 it's a, a simple vote. It's a, it's a comprehensive permit. It's a simple, it's a simple majority. Right. There, is so. a, there is a motion. James made it. I seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to go nay. Yeah, nay. So it carries 3-2. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck in getting the money. You're welcome. Much appreciated. Uh, All right. So now at this point, we are past 11 o'clock. I will not. We, I will we, not be the one to make that motion. We're going home. <laughs> I don't know if you are, but we are. We're business till 11:10. Thank you, James. Not a minute longer. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> second by Scott. Thank you, Scott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. All right. We took six out of order, and thank you once again, everyone. Number five. Uh, Board Administrative Approval of Application 75-18 and 21-21, 108 Gansett Road and Woods Hole, modification to a previously approved plans with vote anticipated. So letter says, hi, Noreen, as you may recall, I had sent, this is from Kevin Clower, I had sent over an application last week seeking administrative review of a modification to a special permit for 108 Gansett, which was not accepted as it would have had, it would have added a bedroom to the guest house. While I understand that you as the zoning administrator cannot review the Application for administrative approval. I do believe the board could review the application administratively without the, necess the necessity of a full public hearing and modification of the decision. Please let me know if you agree with the assessment, and I will submit a revised application seeking administrative approval with the board. Uh, it says applicant is seeking to modify special permit. Uh, he names the permits which recognize two dwellings on the lot and allowed both dwellings to be raised and rebuilt, as well as construction of a pool and conservatory. The applicant now seeks minor changes to the site plans and design of the guest house, all of which are set forth in the cover letter. Let's just skip to the cover letter. Uh, dear Ms. Stockman, as you know, I represent Lori and LLC, the owner of 188 Gansett Road Woods Hole. They are seeking administrative approval for minor modification of special permit number 21-21, which was itself a modification of permit 75-18. Those permits acknowledge the second dwelling on the property under 240-10.1C5, previously 243.A, and allowed for both dwellings on the property to be raised and rebuilt with a seven-bedroom primary dwelling and a three-bedroom guest house, as well as construction of a conservatory and a pool, both of which were located in the front yard pursuant to 240-11.4A1I, previously 240-68A8. There have been some minor changes made to the plans for the guest house, which they are seeking administrative approval for modification. These changes will not affect lot coverage, will not create any new nonconformities, and will not sub represent a substantial deviation from the permit. Specifically, the location of the generator on the southeastern side of the guest house has been slightly modified. An additional bedroom and bathroom have been proposed for the basement of the guest house. Please note that this does not change the shape or size of the building. A chamber has been added to septic system B to accommodate the additional bedroom. The shape and location of the window well on the southern side has been modified. Condition number 10 of the permit, any deviation no matter how minor from plan submitted and approved, or in writing by the board shall be submitted to the board. Prior to implementation of said change, minor change may be uh, missing approved, blah, blah, blah. A connection with this, please find the following, the application, the documents. So he's basically looking to add a, a third bedroom and a bath and a basement of the guest house along with the changes to the, along with the changes to the AC modification and stuff. But the septic hasn't been modified yet, correct? I, 
I don't think so. Good point. They said about added a chamber. They said they said they've added a chamber, but again, the plans Board are here. Right. Okay. I don't have anything to go by because there's nothing from Board of Health. I mean, it's not like an actual. Isn't the question is it? The question is, it's a substantial. Or not? That's, uh, that's no, all there is. No, no, that's that's for a comprehensive permits. It's a board administrative approval, so it's. Oh. So it would be, do we need a hearing or not? Is he saying that he wants to seems try like, to do without it? Seems hearing? like a, a lot of information to take in without plans to, to yeah. approve it administratively. To me, I agree. I agree. There's no definition of minor either. There's a bedroom and a bathroom. Not in a basement. I consider moving a generator a minor change. Exactly. <laughs> Bring that up. In the Another next bedroom building. and a bathroom. Oh. Yeah. And I think that's a simple question on the table right now, right? So we shouldn't have to, that's, right? So the question is, are we going to allow a, uh, an administrative modification, or do we want to have a hearing? I make a motion that we don't allow administrative I second. Uh, approval. Yeah. And then th that would trigger a hearing. It's a trigger hearing. Scott, well, I mean, well no, Scott, to your point, it kind of yeah. operates similar to an insubstantial change. Well, that's how I was be, yeah. working it out in my head yep. before 10 after when I hear Mr. Morse explodes. <laughs> All right. So, Scott, that was you making the motion Correct. to deny, right? Correct. Is there a second? Second. Second by Scott. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. Board updates. Anything? I pulled my papers on Tuesday. Congrats. Board discussion. The codification committee restarted again. The working group, I should say. All right. Anything else for board discussion? Well, we Saturday. Have board Who's work? bringing what? Board workshop. Who's bringing what for breakfast? I'm bringing two quiche. Does anyone have any food allergies I should be aware of? Or <laughs> dairy allergies? <laughs> just a quiche. Just use lots <laughs> of like dairy and nuts and peanut Did butter and everything. What <laughs> people are bringing? I think we'll all find out. I'm bringing an app, what's called an apple pancake that my wife makes. That's <laughs> sounds, unbelievable. Sounds wonderful. Pick up some All right. Uh, so nice. board, board work next. Yeah, board workshop this Saturday, this Saturday, Saturday. 26, 9 a.m. Future sure. agenda items, anything? All right. And after our board workshop, our next regularly scheduled hearing will be March 10th, 2022, 6:30 here at Falmouth Town Hall. Meeting adjourned. Made it with a minute to spare.